until the ball is kicked. So the kick coverage team and the kick return team or excuse me, until the ball is caught. The kick coverage team and the kick return team have to remain stationary until the ball is caught. Once the ball is caught, then everybody can get in motion. Now, what this creates is, if you've seen from some of the spring leagues, it does, it it limits the blow-up plays, you know, guys getting hit with a kick coverage guy coming down full steam for 70 yards, basically. It limits that. So, injury-wise, it is a little bit more beneficial to the uh, to the teams but the other thing it does is you it's harder to peel back a safety you do have to directionally kick to maybe peel back a safety and it allows for the kick returner to potentially just break one line and basically bust out a big return so it could lead to more exciting return plays I think what you're going to have is just teams as much as they can kicking it through the end zone which they already do very rarely in the NFL do you uh, do you see kick returns anyway? But I think you're going to have teams kicking it through the end zone. But it's also if the ball is kicked in the field of play, you're going to be able to return the ball. Um, can I get Lunsford real quick? Lunsford, I mean, you're, you're a guy that played football throughout your career, played in uh, the collegiate level there at Birmingham Southern. Um, did you, like, I don't think uh, you were a lineman, so I doubt you played much kick coverage, but – there were a significant amount of the the big hit blow ups on on kick coverage, right? Yeah, uh, no, I was the lineman, so I didn't do a lot of running uh, when it came to the field. But uh, yeah, there's there's always massive things. I mean, when you look at highlight reels of like, let's say Alabama, they play a highlight reel beforehand, you know, of like all the big hits and yep. everything. So many of those are on kickoffs that you can get that head of steam because you're literally running down the field. And I don't remember what the name of the drill was, but there was a drill that we had to get punished when I was playing in high school that. You would have to catch the ball and let basically all eleven come at you oh, at the same time. <laughs> it was it was not real fun uh, to do that. Basically, you had to do that whenever you missed a key block. But uh, yeah, that's there's a lot of big hits on that. And this will be in Lunsford. You know how this works. This will be in the NFL. They'll 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 trumpet the safety of it, and then it'll make its way to college. You're going to see this oh, yeah. in college before it's too long. Oh yeah, I think what you know the XFL back in the day did a lot for like technology and stuff, like the 2001 version we had. But now I think the leagues, the AAF, the XFL, the USFL, whatever, have done a great job from the kickoff standpoint. I would be fine just getting rid of them, honestly, and going with the AAF did and just basically start first and 10 at the 25 because yeah, that's what 99% of them yep. are going to be anyway. Yep. But I'm, I'm all for making it different just because I like change in general. Everybody's pointing out Reuben Foster would hate this. That hit against exactly. – uh, it was on Fournette, right? He was yeah. returning the kick for yeah, LSU. LSU yeah. yeah, he blew him up. Um, all right, so we'll see how this is uh, received in the NFL and if it makes its way down to college. As we get out of here, a reminder, Hemp Hill Services, when something is not running right, draining right, working right, that is who you call. Uh, the HVAC, the plumbing, all of that Hemp Hill Services, whether you're a home or a business, you're going to need it at some point. Make sure you go ahead and bookmark Hemp Hill, 229-2090. That's a 205 number, 229-2090. All right, we start our coverage from L.A. tomorrow. Dunaway will be on the ground. He'll be on the show with us. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock from out at Crypto.com Arena where the Alabama Crimson Tide will play North Carolina in the Sweet 16 Thursday. Dunaway on the ground in L.A. tomorrow. Thanks to mybookie.ag code next round. We'll see you at 9 o'clock tomorrow. Have a great afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the next round. Every day, someone is ridiculed and mocked for the clothing they chose to wear. It's a harsh reality we all must face. But you have the chance to change all of that with one visit to nextround.store. For just a few minutes of browsing, you will observe so many clothing options, from hats to hoodies to t-shirts. Please, for yourself or someone you love, go to nextround.store and embrace the warmth (laughs) of true attire. Maybe you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, X, LinkedIn, or TikTok while we're changing the game yet again. Tyler's Telegrams has been developed exclusively for you. Hi, this is the lovable boy you know as Tyler the Intern. I'm a businessman now. I will come directly to your door and tell you every time a new piece of TNR content drops. For the low, low price of $740,000, you can be notified by me, one of the biggest stars of the next round, about that thing you missed. Sure, 
The rest of those social media services are free, but so is radio, and we all know how well that's trending. Tyler's Telegrams is currently operating exclusively in Bibb County. Other social media platforms are available everywhere. Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. It is Sweet 16 Eve. I'm Ryan Brown in Birmingham. You see Jim Dunaway in L.A. for the Sweet 16. Our coverage from Los Angeles presented by MyBookie.ag. Code next round to get on board for the Sweet 16 and Elite 8. MyBookie.ag. Code next round. Get that sign-on bonus. How are things in uh, Hollywood there, Jimmy D.? Um, I have overthought everything so far on this really? trip. You know, I woke up at my normal time, uh, which was... Uh, 545 Birmingham, 345 Pacific time, uh, because I figured I needed to do the same thing since I was going to be on the show with you. It was so important for me to be at this spot because they had lighting here at One Cow Plaza and everything because it was pitch black dark when I woke up until just about 10 minutes ago, Brownie, and now the sun's coming up, and I don't know where the sun's going to be. I think it's going to be over my shoulder. I'm going to have to rearrange everything. I've been sitting in this spot. For the last 90 minutes waiting for the show to start and i've overthought everything <laughs> that's so unlike you so unlike you to rock, <laughs> rock star are you stunned that way has overthought something no i was the, I didn't think uh, you're, you're like a van gogh over here with the painting and it's great yeah it's great what is that uh so you're uh you're down is it downtown la is that where the uh the team and media hotels are uh it is one cow plaza is where i'm sitting right now i'm a, about i think two blocks away from the team hotel uh, I'm about five blocks from the Media Hotel, and I'm about 10 blocks from Crypto.com Arena, or as I like to call it out here, a $75 Uber ride. Yeah, <laughs> it's a 10-block walk. It's good <laughs> exercise for you. And uh, it's a perfectly safe area to take a 10-block walk, so I don't, I don't think you should overthink that one. <laughs> Uh, w- yeah. w- when it comes game time. Well, good. I'm glad you yeah. made it out there okay. Um, there was a uh, text thread for those of us that are here. Lance is on vacation, of course. Uh, Scott is on vacation. We've got a lot of people, uh, a lot of people with kids that are out for spring break, so they're on vacation right now. Uh, so it was kind of a scaled down skeleton crew text thread, and I can't remember if it was straight to me or in that thread that this might have been the best flight of Jim Dunaway's life. Is that is that what I understand? Well, Yeah, let me first off say I've never flown internationally before. I've gone to Jamaica twice, right? uh, To the Dominican Republic once, so I guess that's international. One hundred percent. But I've never flown. Yeah, yeah, but I've never flown across an ocean, a major ocean, a big long flight on a huge plane. I think the most, the largest plane I've ever been on is like a a two, a two three two. All right. So this one, this was my first of all, Birmingham to Atlanta was the it was a roller coaster it was a small plane right and we bounced we didn't get high enough you know that short flight so it was rough all the way all the way only 30 minutes but it was a 30 minute spin 30 minute space mountain but then atlanta to la that plane was going atlanta la tokyo so it was huge it was one of those um i think it's kml one of those airlines uh through delta and it was i was in seat h and I think the seats went all the way to E A G I J K L across. So it was like three, six, three. It was a huge, huge plane, biggest plane I've ever been on. So we take off, um, and then there's no turbulence. I guess because it's it's a bigger plane. I don't know. We didn't bounce at all. And then I had a, my own video screen because you had booked you booked my flight. So congratulations to you. You'd booked my flight, and I had unbelievable leg room. Like it looked like I was I was the first row right behind first class. So I had all that leg room. I was practically first class and it had a screen that folded out under my seat that I was able to sit, sit there and I watched like three episodes of Yellowstone, a whole season of Abbott Elementary on the flight out here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, a whole like, season of Abbott Elementary. What is yeah, yeah. is that a show season you two. like? I, I, uh, no, I've never watched it, oh, but okay. season two was available. I'd heard great things. So it was mindless television for 22 minutes, and each episode was 22 minutes. So it worked out really good. It worked out really <laughs> okay, good. So, so. Three, yeah, it was a four and a half hour flight. We had to circle a little bit in LA before we landed because apparently it's a big airport. 
And uh, yep. I think I can knock out eight episodes of Abbott Elementary and three episodes of Yellowstone. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm glad you made that. Is, that's a lot. A bunch of Abbott Elementary and a bunch of Yellowstone. So I'm glad you had a good flight. Yeah, yes. I'm glad you're out there. I, Pe- people are saying, is he saying Cal, C-O-W Plaza or Cal, C-A-L? I think that goes without saying it's C-A-L <laughs> unless the livestock shows <laughs> up and I'm incorrect here. <laughs> no, it is uh, C-A-L. Okay. But I will tell you. Uh, you, for some reason, you convinced me not to check a bag. <laughs> I forget why we decided that. What? No, 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 uh, no, no, no. I did not convince you. I just pointed out, like, your flight yesterday, I think, left Birmingham at 142. The show ends at noon. And I was like, you could stay right. for the whole show if you don't check a bag. You could probably do that. If you check a bag, you need to leave early. So you chose not to check a bag, right? I did not check a bag, okay. but I still left early. And I got to the airport in plenty of time. Yeah. Uh, and, and then I, but I, I'm, a, I'm a one bag guy. I have just packed. I've got three pairs of pants. Oh dear! Three underwear, two pairs of shoes, three shirts, and no jacket. And all the locals out here, you guys may see me shaking here on the air. All the locals out here are talking about God. Never this cold, this late in the year before out here. They're they're all bundled up. Well, Rock, Rock, yeah, walk by with like. Rock, Rock, yeah. Rock, Rockstar said in the pre-show, you're blowing in your your hand a lot, like it was cold out there. So is that yeah. cold? Yeah. Uh, I am shaking right now. This I is just a, looked. I've got my, I've got my one hundred and eighty-five dollar uh, coastal hoodie. Yeah. That's the thickest thing I own out here. And Everything just... else is, is rowback gear. I'm just <laughs> looking at the internet, and it's saying, like I'm looking right now, Los Angeles. It does say that they have these things called store stores <laughs> that you can oh, buy jackets. Uh, I don't know if it's a soft jacket. <laughs> Well, Dunaway, I mean, I, I, the chat room is on to this. Dunaway has taken few pants and little underwear. Bama is through to the Elite Eight. I don't think there's any doubt about this now. This is the sign we needed. <laughs> I I did not want to landmine this thing, so yep. I did not pack for Saturday. Yep, that's uh, it. It, it, it is a store. If Alabama wins, it is time for me to go shopping on the next round. Or maybe somebody can send me some rowback gear. Yeah. You will, uh, you will head over to Crypto.com Arena later today. So for those that don't know how all this works, um, today, the day before the game, it'll be a shoot-around. It'll be a media day. Nate Oates will speak with the media. The locker rooms will be open. That's where you'll go. You'll go talk to some of the Bama players in the locker room who, uh, by the way, they've been out there longer than Dunaway. This is a team that has been <laughs> on the road for quite a while. They'll probably be happy yeah. to see some familiar faces. Well, uh, you know, Taylor was with them in Spokane. Uh, and she talked about what a uh, wonderful group of folks they are to interview. And it's, you know, just like the Auburn guys we, we hung out with in Nashville for an extended period of time. You, you have a chemistry within a team. But then when you start seeing the same media people over and over, you develop a little bit of a, a chemistry uh, with them as well. And I, I went by the team hotel last night and uh, got to talk to some of the folks who have been on the road a little bit. And saw some of the players, uh, some of their family was rolling into town. From LAX last night, I guess they had gone back home or some were coming from another hotel, but there were some uh, reuniting in the lobby. And, um, yeah, they've been on the road a while, but so far it's not wearing on them. But, you know, if if um, if lightning strikes and this team goes on to the final four, they leave here and then they go to Phoenix yeah. without coming home. You're talking about not packing enough clothes. They, You know, somebody's doing laundry on this road trip for the Crimson Tide. But you hope to keep going. And back to your point about crypto today, uh, Alabama will practice second. Clemson will practice first. Um, you tell me why you think this is the situation. Okay. Uh, Clemson uh, Clemson says uh, their entire practice at Crypto.com is open. Alabama's practice, first 15 minutes. Is uh, open. That's going to be Latrell Reitzel related. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, I think so too. So the chances of me seeing Latrell Reitzel and I asked that question last night of some Alabama people, and you know, it's uh, it, no, not, nothing definite. Everything, you know, is hush hush. So we'll see what right cell situation is uh, coming up in the game on uh, Thursday. Um, but you know, first thing I'm going to do on when I get to the arena is look at right cell, see if he's out there moving around and shooting. And I'll send you that video if he's out there. If you're following us at Next Round Live, uh, but there is a good chance I'm not going to be shocked that um, we end up not seeing right cell for our first 15 minutes. Yeah, I think that's the big story there is uh, Latrell Wrightsell. I don't think there's any doubt it. Uh, it's a game changer if he's not there. Um, yeah, it's a massive story. Again, Dunaway's coverage presented by MyBookie.ag. He will be over at uh, over at Crypto.com Arena with uh, all of that just a little bit later on. So make sure you follow us on all social media at Next Round Live. Dunaway and Little T will be sending some of that stuff out 
there in extra and live. If he is at the shoot around and he's there for the media to see, I, I don't know that you read one thing into that or the other. I mean, that could be just playing mind games with North Carolina too, Dunaway. That's why that last, that's why that first 15 minutes and that last 45 minutes, one is open, one is closed because once they start working on the North Carolina game plan, it would be, it would be interesting to see who the five starters out there are running through, you know, what they know the game plan is. Yeah, a hundred percent. And, and that'll be big, but I, you have to prepare if you're, if you're North Carolina, you got to prepare for right still being out there as much as that impacts your preparation or not. Um, Nate was very confident after the game. And as you said, he backed off uh, as we progressed through the week to where I guess now it's going to end up being officially a game time decision. But we'll hear from Nate today on the podium. I think that'll hit about 355, 4 o'clock central time. I may have to ditch this uh, microphone, by the way, because I think it's shaking. I think it is. It, is it not are, shaking? Are you that cold it's, that it's, it's shaking? You know, there's an old saying that it's coldest right before the dawn, and what? that is 100% no, the mic is The mic is, uh, Rockstar, I'm not wrong. The mic is shaking. Yeah, right? you're, wrong. Yeah. Well, you're in the war zone, man. The mic, <laughs> the mic is shaking? Well, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. no, it's not. No, it, it is. is. Okay. It's like your whole body's shaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gotten it, tremendously colder here game. in the last uh, yeah. 15 minutes. <laughs> Maybe I'm just nervous. <laughs> Maybe I've had, since I got up at 4.45 and went to bed at one four, uh, one fifteen. Maybe I've had too many of these this morning. Yeah, I don't possible. know. That is possible. But anyway, Nate, Nate and them will be uh, – it's 11.50 Pacific practice time, so 1.50 Birmingham time that the Tide will be practicing, and then their news conference will be after that. So Jim will have, have all of that from Crypto.com Arena. Unfortunately, Reitzel's injury, part of a big storyline here. We'll talk more about that. Injuries don't have to be uh, something that ruins your 2024, though. There are new ways to contact your favorite precision sports medicine and orthopedic provider – This is the number, 205-512-3885. That's 205-512-3885, precisionsportsortho.com slash 2024, precisionsportsortho.com slash 2024. Orthopedic care is better together. Find your provider today, 205-512-3885 or precisionsportsortho.com slash 2024. So that's one thing we'll watch. Again, we've talked so much about this. You can also see Aaron Suttles talking about it at Bama and Bourbon. We taped yesterday at Roll Tide Pods. Uh, that, that, that starting four, no, that starting five, excuse me, with the four guards, that, that's what Nate Oates is most comfortable with. It dictates what other teams have to do to match, and it is Alabama's best lineup. So when Reitzel is out, then Nate Oates has to make that decision. What do you do with that fourth spot there? What do you do, technically the fifth spot, but – what do, what do you do there? You know you're gonna you'd like to keep Grant Nelson inside and play the four guards, but a lot of times they've moved Grant Nelson back out and they've gone with Pringle there. So, you know that's a decision Nate Oates has got to make. I guess Jim, when when Armando Baycott is there, you got you got Pringle, you got Nelson, you got uh, Waggy, you've got uh, Mo Diabate, you got yeah that's the, I count right there twenty fouls. So you that's know, right, that's you, right. You just you just hammer yeah. him and hope, right? Yeah. Well. They- that, you know, remember Alabama played Zach Eady earlier yeah. this year. And if you go back and check that game, I think Alabama led late in that contest against Purdue they with did. big Zach yeah. Eady. Yeah, that, that. And they, they ran up, they, but they, they got into major foul trouble uh, with the big guys, but they ran a lot of fouls at him. And I don't know if you have to do that as much with Baycott as you would with Zach Eady, uh, but maybe. Uh, but if you're an Alabama fan against Baycock, you hope Nick Pringle – has the game of his life. You hope it's one of those games um, that people look back and you say, man, that was his best game ever in an Alabama uniform. If so, Alabama's got a good chance of winning this game. Well, in that game against Purdue, they shot twice as many free throws as Alabama, 28-14. to And the bad news for Alabama is that day Purdue was 24-28 uh, from the line in a game Bama lost by six. Bama was 9-14 of 14 from the stripe. So, that tells you right there that um, they, they outnumber Purdue fouls 24 to 15 in that game. In the actual individual box score, um, Alabama against Edie, he scored 35 points, but he was 11 of 11 from the stripe. I mean, that's for a big guy, a guy his size, that's hard to defend if he's going to hit 11 of 11 from the stripe. I don't, I don't, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's hard to stop him and I can't foul him, so I don't know what I do there. Yeah, you, you hope you would hope that the big guy would, you could you could hack a shack yeah. or something like that. So uh, not that situation there. It'll be interesting to see how Nate Oates attacks that. Uh, it'll be one of those great chess match matches the whole game. 
you just hope, and I think this is something Ron Slay said and a couple of our other guests have said all week long, uh, you just hope that Alabama gets hot early on and is able to um, sort of dictate how the game's been played. And if Alabama's hitting their threes, that may force North Carolina to loosen things up a little bit inside on the uh, on their end of the floor, and that may help Alabama out a little bit. Um, you just hope Alabama brings the intensity intensity they brought the other night defensively. Yeah. Um, but we know one thing, they're not bringing that officiating crew with them because they didn't make it to the next round. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're in the NIT now. Uh, Baycott, by the way, just to put a bow on that, a 68.8% free throw shooter for his career, but – He's shooting 78% but, this season, 78% this season. So he's shooting 10% above his career average this year. Um, so, you know, if you send him to the line a lot, maybe he reverts to the 68% shooter. I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, you take your chances there with him, and, you know, not having the easy layups, the easy dunks and things. Um, I like the way Alabama, even their guards rebound yeah. so well. Yeah. Um, they, they, it seems like Mark Sears and Aaron Estrada are always, they, it seems like they know where the ball is going to bounce on a rebound. They're good at reading balls off the rim. Um, so I like the way the guards rebound. But I go back to Pringle and really Grant Nelson, who hadn't played a, you know, an excellent game in a long time. You really hope uh, that they end up uh, just having the game of their lives tomorrow night. That's what you would hope. Um, all right, so Charles says it's not coldest just before the dawn. It's darkest just before the dawn. Uh, Dang it. John says, just go inside. Elliot says, do they have indoors in California? <laughs> Listen, first off, uh, when you're making these decisions at 4.45 a.m., right. I don't think your brain's working right. No, right? You know, I didn't, sleep, no. I didn't sleep a lot yesterday. I, I, like, I think Taylor sleeps really well on flights. I don't know how anybody else is, but I think she actually can sleep on a flight. I can't uh, for a variety of reasons. One of them. I'm afraid I'm going to snore, uh-huh. and I don't want to be the guy that's snoring on the plane. Uh, obviously, Taylor doesn't snore, I guess, but you know, Jim, Jimmy America does, I guess, and I don't want to do that on a plane. So I'm wide awake the entire flight. So I got no sleep yesterday. I did my normal shift like uh, we all do, came out here, and then you know, hung out with some people for a little bit, and then by the time I'm in the bed, I may have gotten two and a half hours of sleep. Yeah. So now I'm up at 4.45, and I'm worried that my new phone, the alarm's not going to work, so I've got 18 people lined up to call me to make sure I don't miss the show. But now I'm up 445 or 345 Pacific time, 545 Birmingham time. And I don't think you make smart decisions there. Like I didn't, it didn't even dawn on me that the sun would be up when we started the show. I thought I'd be doing it in total darkness. So you got a brand new, you got a brand new (laughs) iPhone and you're worried about the alarm. Like why, why are you worried about the alarm? Because of the settings. I don't have my settings the way it was in, with the with the old 13, the 15 Pro or 17 Pro, whatever I've got now. I, it, it's not it's not working. It, it's working fantastic, just not exactly the way I want it. Buttons aren't working. Lunsford didn't check on, check on it before I left. I mean, it's just a it's just a um, there's no comfort level with it. It's like I've got a rookie quarterback now in my iPhone after after Tom Brady retired. My 13 lasted me. Through our whole transition from radio to this, my other phone was with me. And it, it, it was fantastic. But, you know, new technology, this freaking microphone wouldn't work in my other one. So I had to make a change before I came out here. Yeah. Oh, it's quite a trip so far. Uh, all right. Dunaway, yeah. we'll continue from LA. <laughs> by, the way, this, by the way, this 22 minutes we just did, yeah. better than some – Better than some episodes of Abbott Elementary. <laughs> you watched the whole second <laughs> season, though. Why would you watch the whole second I was, season? I was drunk on a plane. Oh, okay. I had nothing else to do. Uh, gutter cap of Birmingham. Cap it, don't snap it. Make sure you cover those gutters and clean them out one final time. See, Stu and his crew will come clean them out one final time. Then you put that uh, gutter cap over it, and they remain clog-free. No leaves, no pine straw, no pine cones clogging up your gutters, and they work great. Call our buddy C. Stu, 205-823-2212, 205-823-2212. Uh, for Gutter Cap Birmingham, cap it, don't snap it. Gutter Cap, 823-2212. All right, we got a lot more ground to cover. There were uh, three, two big local Birmingham uh, basketball announcements that were major. And one big nationally, we've got a ton of football to get to. We'll still do four downs. We'll still do trash, of course. Richard Hendricks, SEC Network, former Alabama great, going to join us at 10. 
And uh, we'll talk more uh, from his point of view on the Alabama and North Carolina game coming up in the Sweet 16. We'll talk the rest of the Sweet 16 as well. As you pointed out, Dunaway, uh, this is only the fifth time. All the ones and twos are through to the Sweet 16, which would tell you we're, we could be set up for an epic weekend of basketball here. Oh, some great matchups. I mean, just uh, you just look at the name brands that are in this thing. So you uh, you go to mybookie.ag. By the way, some news about college athletics and, and gambling we'll get to later on. Charlie Baker, the NCAA president, making some news. Mybookie.ag, mybookie.ag, bringing us all of our coverage out here from Los Angeles. And also our friends at Autograph, too. Don't forget the Autograph app. You can download that. And all you do is put your email address in and the promo code TNR. And uh, that's a free download. And you follow your favorite teams right there. But it is a uh, it's an epic time of year. I can't wait for Thursday night to get here to see what unfolds in these next uh, this next round of 16. Some really good name brands. Thursday and Friday is going to be fun. Alabama holding is a four point favorite, by the way, at mybookie.ag or four point dog. I'm sorry. North Carolina holding is a four point favorite, a total of one seventy three and a half. Which, if you've watched either of these teams, it should not surprise you. That is the biggest total on the board. But Dunaway, not only is it the biggest total on the board, it's the biggest total on the board by 19 points. I mean, there's, wow. there's not another game that's even close. The next closest game is Gonzaga and Purdue. Uh, other than that, that 173.5, by far and away the biggest total on the board for the Sweet 16. <laughs> So I can leave my uh, handmade D and the picket fence sign at home. Not going to see a lot of that. Nobody's planning on doing yep, that. Yep, not going to uh, see a lot of that. This this sets up to be a pretty entertaining scoring fest there with North Carolina a four-point favorite and a total of 173 and a half. Uh, all right, so we're going to talk yeah. a lot more about that. we got a lot to get to on the show today. When we return, we'll talk about uh, three guys in college basketball that are not departing their current spot. That is next on the next round live from Birmingham in L.A. Follow the next round on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Next Round Live. NASCAR is returning to Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 Geico 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 Geico 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the Geico 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. You have all heard of Red Wing Shoes, but what is Red Wing Shoes? It's the place where men buy boots, plain and simple. Who are Red Wing's customers? They are construction workers, warehouse employees, college students, the guy that fixes your AC, the guy at the end of the bar, the IT guy. Red Wing is a father, Red Wing is a son, Red Wing is a cult following shared by all men. A classic comfortable pair of cool boots with a story to tell. What's your Red Wing story? Red Wing Shoe Stores, located in Pelham and Trussville. If renting is putting a dent in your bank account, here's your sign from the universe that it's time to buy a new home. And who better to help you through the ins and outs of home buying than our friends at Mortgage Right? With Mortgage Right, you don't have to worry about becoming a short notice mortgage expert because they do all the heavy lifting for you. They're trusted mortgage professionals and they'll help you choose the right mortgage option and stand by your side every step of the way. Visit mortgageright.com slash TNR to buy before renting runs you dry. That's mortgageright.com slash TNR. NMLS 2239 Equal Housing Lender. Stop by the New York Butcher Shop and pick up the finest in certified Angus Prime Beef steaks and burgers, premium pork chops, ribs, and all-natural chicken cut to order just for you. Their chef-prepared entrees and side dishes are the perfect dinner-to-go choice for your family and are ready to heat at home. With a great selection of fine wines and desserts, the New York Butcher Shop is your one-stop dinner shop. Two locations to serve you, Cahaba Heights and on Highway 119 in Greystone, the New York Butcher Shop. Rare quality, well-done service. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about my friends at Michelson Laser Vision, located conveniently UAB Highlands. Almost 20 years ago, I went in for the procedure. Only took 12 minutes for both eyes. When I went in, I had 2200 vision. I was legally blind. Now I have 2015 vision, still 19 years later. Make the call today. Schedule a hassle-free consultation. 969-8100. Dr. Mark Michelson, Dr. Jen Michelson, Michelson Laser Vision. Make sure you tell them the next round sent you. 969-8100 or Michelson and laservision.com. It's time to pull the trigger on the Next Round merch that you've been eyeing. We know there's a lot to choose from at nextround.store, so here's a few of our favorite picks. If you want to match LT and Brown, go the TNR logo hoodie and throw in one of Dunaway's favorite hats. Any of them will do. 
The backroom's go-to is the classic logo t-shirt, while my personal favorite is the light blue TNR crew neck. All of these items can be found at nextround.store and are EG approved. Rest assured, your order will be packed with lots of love from us here at the next round. Head over to nextround.store to start filling up your cart. All right, we continue on the next round. Dunaway is out in L.A. <laughs> It'll be at Staples Center later on, courtesy of mybookie.ag, code next round, and the autograph app, code TNR. Uh, Dunaway, before we continue with some players and a coach that are staying put, or a player and two coaches that are staying put, the Birmingham Squadron back on the court soon. Yeah, last home game of the year is coming up uh, this Saturday night, 7 o'clock down at Legacy Arena. Get out there, last home game of the season, T-shirts to the first 500 fans through the gate and a $5 beer all night long in the chill zone and a celebration of the whole year for the squadron. It's been a great year, great gates, and uh, they want to say thank you to the fans one more time, uh, one more home game in the regular season. It is Saturday night. Get your tickets there with the Birmingham Squadron.com, Birmingham Squadron.com, or 205-719-0850. All right, so let's talk about some non-departures, some people that are staying put, and let's start locally, and then we'll work our way to the bigger story nationally. Okay. Um, first of all, Yaks will be back. Um, Yaxel Lindenberg, UAB's best player this year, announces on social media last night he is returning to UAB. This is a huge, huge, huge keep for Andy Kennedy because I think Yaks, that's a guy's a walking double-double in the American Played in the NCAA tournament, got in some foul trouble, obviously, against San Diego State. But uh, this is a guy that I think had some value on the open market and has said, you know what, UAB bet on me coming out of JUCO, and I'm going to be loyal to them. Now, look, I'm sure he's going to make some NIL good for him at UAB, but I do appreciate the fact that he's like, they, they took a chance on me, and I am going to be loyal to them. I, I don't. There's not a ton of that in college athletics, it doesn't feel like anymore. Well, you know, Andy Kennedy was at the Birmingham Tip-Off Club yesterday, and he sort of hinted that this news was coming. He kept saying everyone just assumed that Jelly Walker was going to leave yep. after one year when he blew up with Barstool and stuff, and he came back and stayed true to UAB. And he, uh, Andy was sort of laying the groundwork for what Yax was going to announce, and then Yax makes that announcement. But Andy, uh, you know, in conversations, had told people, and I think he ended up saying this publicly as well, I could show you his DMs of the contact that Yax was getting from a lot of programs around the country, name programs, and he never put his name in the portal. So his name wasn't officially in the portal and still DM after DM after DM of contact. Doesn't surprise anybody, right? We all expect um, all this legal and illegal contact to be going on. It happens in football. It happens in basketball, probably more so in basketball for a long period of time because it has been – a free portal movement thing for years, way before football was able to do it. But for Yaks to say no to all those out there, to stay with what he knows is true, to stay with a coach that he trusts, because you know sometimes you leave, you get in a situation, it's not exactly what you what you were promised. I think that's not only big for Yaks to stay there, he knows he's going to be a big part, but he also trusts that Andy Kennedy Brown is going to bring in more guys from the portal and surround him and sort of build the team around him coming back next year yeah huge 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 get slash keep however you want to qualify it for andy kennedy and uab that's that's a team you know that will probably start the year next year among if not at the top of the favorites in the american i mean they finished in the top four this year got that uh, double bye in the conference tournament dusty may is gone from florida atlantic that has kind of been the you know the the uh the lead team in both conference usa and the uh, american over the last couple of years you got to think maybe they take a little bit of a step back with some guys leaving and dusty may going so i mean i think when you start the season uab is going to be viewed as one of the favorites to win that conference especially and and that's that's only magnified with the axe coming back yeah that's exactly right you know he'll be a candidate for preseason yep. player of the year uh he'll be uh you know obviously a first team all conference player in the american and you're talking about a league, you know, that forget Florida Atlantic. It's got Memphis in it. It's got some it's got some name brands uh, at one point, some blue bloods in, in college basketball or pseudo blue blood, blue bloods in Memphis and Wichita State and some others that play really good basketball. So UAB sort of put their flag in the ground with that conference championship and that NCAA tournament bid and then getting Yaks back 
that just sort of reemphasizes what Andy Kennedy has done there on the south side. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. All right, let's uh, stay local for one more. Yesterday, Sanford announces they've yeah. reached a contact a con- contract extension. Excuse me, with Bucky McMillan. Uh, obviously playing in the NCAA tournament, almost beating Kansas. Bill Self uh, giving them about as as huge a compliment as he could give Bucky and Sanford basketball afterwards. Uh, it became a big story nationally. There were some job openings. Uh, I've, I've, I've been told two things over the weekend. Number one, I was told the amount of money that Vanderbilt was willing to offer Bucky McMillan if he had interest in the job. And then I was also told that Sanford had some boosters – or maybe a booster that were willing to go very, very deep in their pocket to keep Bucky McMillan at Sanford. Matching SEC money, I don't know. But they were willing to make him really have to think twice about leaving a job where he could be comfortable and make this kind of money and still challenge the NCAA tournament. I got to think Bucky got a nice, nice, nice raise yesterday at Sanford. Yeah, and I'm only going to piggyback off of what you told me privately. Um, And so when I saw this story unfolding, uh, I had what you had told me through your reporting and your sourcing um, that I sat back and I watched it unfold. And when that news broke and I got it mid-flight on the way to L.A., I was like, man, I think we would be surprised when that salary comes out for Bucky. That's all I could think about. And I'm not putting, you know, Dusty May to me is getting 3.75 to go to Michigan. Uh, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that's what Bucky is getting, but I think relatively speaking to being the head basketball coach at Stanford in his hometown, a place that he's very comfortable uh, and a job that he's very comfortable at his age. Um, I think we will be very, very surprised when we see that dollar figure of that contract. If they ever release it, they don't have to do that. Um, then that's just good for Stanford. You know, uh, this is this you knew, you answer this for me, Brown. What is the most overused phrase now in college basketball? And it's really a tribute to Mark Few, but every program, whether it's Davidson or Wichita State or somebody like that, and and it's going to be said about Sanford too um, by some national folks and maybe some locally, they could become the Gonzaga of the South. I mean, we heard that about Davidson and stuff. Um, And maybe, you know, maybe that's the case. Maybe they can become Gonzaga of the South. Uh, But right now they're the Sanford of the South. And that's pretty darn good with Bucky, a regular season championship, now a regular season and a conference championship. And he said, he said in the post game after scaring the heck out of Kansas, um, that this is only the beginning. We'll be back in this tournament. And he was talking like he already knew that he had planned on staying at Sanford. That is just a big get. Yeah, the the Gonzaga the whole Gonzaga of the South thing, it's it's just a different world now. Gonzaga couldn't be the Gonzaga of the Pacific Northwest and they may not be <laughs> now. Now that said, they have looked really good in the first two games of this tournament and they're about to get a chance to uh, knock down a literal giant in Purdue. Um, but I don't think they could replicate what they have done in this environment of college basketball. I just really don't. They would lose too many guys to the portal. There were too many guys there were stud Gonzaga players that a North Carolina or a Duke or, you know, a, a, a big a Kentucky, a Kansas would try to get to transfer there. Gonzaga would struggle to match the NIL, and it would be very, very tempting for those guys to leave. Mark Few would have to recruit his tail off to keep those guys to stay in this environment. He didn't coach in that environment. He coached in an environment where he could go get some of those Pacific Northwest guys and, and eventually some big national guys build a team and keep a team. And a lot of times he had four, you know, four-year seniors on his team, sometimes a five-year senior. And he was playing guys that were yeah. a lot of one-and-dones. They had huge advantage there. You just couldn't do that today, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, Drew Timmy was there, it seemed like, forever, forever with yeah. him. And, and he would have absolutely, because he was a star, he could have cashed in and made big money at any program in the country he'd wanted to. And uh, um, so that that is a big get for Samford. You're able to keep things going, and now Buckyball is a national brand after being highlighted on the NCAA tournament. That's only going to help him in the portal or him in recruiting to get more people in there that just want to play that pace. Yep. So Bucky is staying, Yax is staying, and another guy is staying. We'll talk about that in one moment. But a reminder, Michelson Laser Vision can help you get that perfect vision back that maybe you once had. LASIK surgery could be right 
for you. It was for Lance. Lance was uh, basically blind. And now he got <laughs> fighter pilot vision back with that LASIK surgery. You could do that with Michelson. Just call Amy and get a risk-free evaluation. Some of you be getting tax refunds and you're like, hey, that's a pretty good expenditure of my tax refund. Great timing. 969-8100. That is 205-969-8100. MichaelsonLaserVision.com. Just tell Amy when she answers, I want that fighter pilot vision Lance Taylor has. 969-8100. MichaelsonLaserVision.com. And make this the year you improve your vision. All right, the biggest before story. You, before, huh? you, yep. be, before you move on real quick, sure. can I just say something uh, about our, our little company up there? With Taylor gone all last week to Spokane, we were in Nashville for a while uh, before that. I, it feels like forever since we've all been together, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, has it, feels like Lance yep. has been, it feels like Lance has been gone for a month. It feels like Taylor came back yesterday and then has been gone for a month. It feels like I haven't been around anybody for a month. It just, it feels like we've all been spread out for the last, I know it's only been like a few days, but it feels like it's been a long, long time <laughs> since we've all been up there together. We need to have a little, little kumbaya, kumbaya what's that word, kumbaya? We need to have one of those uh, uh, get-togethers, parties, a drink fest. I'll point out, me, you, and Lance did a show together Friday. It is Wednesday. I I, I know it feels like (laughs) longer than you, but uh, or to you, but uh, it really hasn't been that long. Um, Yeah. Well, see, Taylor and I, um, we worked a lot of Saturdays this uh, basketball season. We've gone to a lot of basketball games, and then we were in Nashville for that Friday, Saturday, Sunday selection show, drive home, back at work Monday. I don't know the last time Little T had a day off. I, I don't either. I don't either. I'm sure she'll uh, yeah. she'll take one uh, take one Saturday. Hey, so uh, John Calipari is staying at Kentucky. Mitch Barnhart announced that uh, in a tweet last night. Uh, as we do every year, we did our end of the season meeting, and uh, I've determined that Coach Calipari will return for another year. Um, a lot of people felt like this was a slam dunk decision by Mitch Barnhart. You got to part ways. Those are the people that don't have to figure out how to make $33 million work in a buyout, which Mitch Barnhart had to do. And you cannot think that that did not contribute to John Calipari staying. I think without a $33 million buyout, I think probably everyone around Kentucky basketball feels like this has become a stale situation, but that buyout's going to help Cal survive. Yeah, but first let's peel the onion back. John Calipari, Hall of Fame coach, okay. right? Yep. His his record, I mean, he's underachieved. I personally think it at Kentucky with one national championship, but he's a Hall of Fame coach. He, he had to find out what well, he, he knew already, but there was a, a tweet from an athletic director saying that John Calipari will come back yep. for his 16th season. Basically, they, they hung him out and said, all right, we're going to hang him out here. And we're going to decide thumbs up or thumbs down with a Hall of Fame coach. I, I, I'm really surprised. I, I, do you not feel like maybe they did it this way? Very publicly, you know, Matt Jones, Kentucky Sports Radio, is tied in so close to the Kentucky folks, so tied in so close to Mitch, the athletic director. From Saturday until the decision yesterday, do you not feel like that Mitch was telling Matt or feeding Matt some information so it gets out there so that John Clay writes the story. The K is accidentally misspelled on Calipari and the Lexington Herald leader. It was almost like from Saturday until yesterday, they were trying to embarrass John Calipari, Hall of Fame coach, enough to where he would say, you know what? F you guys. I am going. I'm out the door. Let's reach a settlement. And then they could have gotten their way for less money. And it didn't work. Calipari sat back. He had a glass of red wine and said, hey, you guys debate. Send out a tweet. Tell them I'm coming back. Yeah. If you're, if I'm leaving, if I'm leaving, give me thirty-three million dollars. I mean, it, it's all right. So on one hand, you know, it's probably not as much fun as it used to be to coach Kentucky basketball when you know the fan base is tired of you, right? When you had won a national right. championship and you're getting number one recruited class after number one recruited class, and you're pumping guys to the NBA, and everybody was in love with Cal. I bet it was the best job in the world to have. So on one hand, it's not that anymore. I mean, he's a, he's a human. Cal can act like it doesn't bother him, but it's it's got to bother him that his fan base, uh, if you did like the, we do the presidential approval ratings, if you did that among Kentucky fans for Cal, I don't know how bad it'd be for him right now. I mean, what would your guess be? 75, 25 disapproval to approval? Would he be that far underwater, would you imagine? I would go 66, 33, but we're okay. in the same ballpark. Yeah. That 66 don't like him. Uh, it's probably Biden numbers. Yeah, it's probably right there in a um, in a 
in a political world of Kentucky basketball where um, and just the way we are in the world in general, that more people dislike the job he's doing than like it, 100%. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that, that can't be fun. But then on the other hand, I'm getting paid $10 million, $9, 10000000 million, whatever it is, to go to a job every day where 66% of the people don't like me. So I figure out how to like it at that point, right? And, guy, and that's one thing about coaches is even if there is, is this level of disdain for what the coach is doing or not doing, Coaches are really good about completely throwing themselves into their profession and almost blocking out all the noise in the process. So I could see John Calipari just basically burying himself in Kentucky basketball and and blocking that out as much as he can. Now, your family hears it. You know, his wife hears it all the time. His kids hear it all the time. That's part of it. But, you know, the coach, those coaches – you know, they're on the road right now recruiting and they're dealing with a transfer portal and it's easy to kind of bury yourself in that right now. So I don't know, maybe, maybe it won't affect Cal as much as I think it will, but boy, it seems like a toxic situation right now for Kentucky basketball. Isn't it funny though, that um, Calipari to me doesn't look like a guy who would bury himself into basketball. And, and I, and I, when I was thinking that, as you were saying that I started thinking to myself, I don't, I don't think we ever think of basketball coaches burying themselves in, in, in their sport like we do football coaches. Yeah, You know, we think you know, with 85 players and a constant recruiting cycle and everything, we feel like the football coaches are working nonstop. And in reality, I never think about it, but basketball is working just as hard as the football guys yeah. in a smaller roster, but they're having to work just as hard. So I guess you can bury yourself into it. But um, I guess over the years, we've seen so much more personality from basketball coaches than we have from football coaches. So it always looks like they have a life. And a lot of good football coaches always look like all they do, all they do is football and basketball coaches eat good, dress good, travel, and have a lot of, a lot of good times. They play a lot of games. It seems like football coaches are always working harder than basketball coaches, and I know that's not true. James, ask a question in the chat room. I'll get your opinion on. I'll remind everyone whether uh, it is not running right uh, flowing right, draining right, Hemp Hill Services is the one that can help. Uh, listen, as the temperatures start to warm up, you're going to be depending more on that HVAC, and you need to make sure it's tuned up and ready to go for the hot summer coming to the Deep South. Hemp Hill will take care of that for you, whatever your issue is, both uh, commercial and residential. 229-2090, Hemp Hill Services, 229-2090, uh, 229-2090, plumbing, heating, cooling, it is Hemp Hill Services. They take care of you and make sure it runs right. In the chat room, Dunaway, James says both Kentucky coaches underachieved based on what they are making. Lance is not here. I know what he would say about Mark Stoops. Based on what Stoops is now making, and his salary is just going up, 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 up. They've paid to keep him at Kentucky. I, we could agree on Cal. I think everybody would say Cal's underachieving based on what he's making. Would you put Mark Stoops in that same category? Um, we just think so differently of Kentucky basketball compared to Kentucky no football. Doubt. But you're right, at some, at some point, we're paying you to be uh, very near the top of the SEC, and the SEC only got tougher uh, when we start this year for Kentucky. Um, yeah, I would say Mark Stoops, compared to where the expectation has been the last couple of years, has underachieved. Yes, I expected more out of Kentucky the last two years. Not to the degree that Kentucky basketball is underachieved, but I do think Kentucky football is underachieved. Yeah, I mean, but there is a little bit of it, and you get on to me and Lance for doing this with Dan Mullen at Mississippi State. You grade Mark Stoops on a curve, though, don't you? I do, but um, at some point that curve has to change a little bit. It can't be locked into that curve forever, or then we're just spinning our wheels. We should just be Vandy at that point and just accept our existence. Okay. If we're going to invest into facilities and salary to keep a coach, at some point you've got to change that S curve a little bit and expect a little bit more. And there are certain, you don't expect it every year, but there are certain years that you expected Kentucky uh, to get to 10 wins and contend for the SEC East when we had the SEC East. And uh, uh, they come up a couple of times short. They didn't make it to Atlanta that uh, people thought they may have had a chance to do that. Uh, do you think Mark Stoops will ever coach in the college football playoff? Um, not I'd, anymore, no. Nah, I'd say no. I mean, I, yeah, I guess, not anymore. yeah, I guess in an old SEC before you invited Texas and Oklahoma in, you know, maybe that he he had a couple teams that played Georgia for the right to go to Atlanta. Those teams probably find their way in the playoffs, but I just don't know anymore in this league that he could play his way there. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm sitting out here in California, Brown, and you know, this is this is Big Ten country now. Yeah, I know it looks like it. Sun's coming up over the Pacific. 
somewhere on the east side of sorrow and uh it's uh it's 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 Big Ten country out here, you know. Nothing like Big Ten weather out here, and oh, yeah. it's just a crazy. It's just crazy where we are in football. But if before Texas and Oklahoma were in the league, a hundred percent, if we had a twelve or a fourteen team playoff, I think Kentucky could have made it. But now that we bring Texas and Oklahoma in, I you know that hurts Kentucky. I think that hurts Ole Miss. You know, can Ole Miss do it this year? Can they main? Can they? Can they keep it? Mississippi State. Those teams that have had moments that looked like they were about to have breakthrough years, bringing Texas and Oklahoma in only adds to the trouble, man. Only adds to the trouble. All right, Dunaway is live in L.A. courtesy of MyBookie.ag. Code next round when you sign on at MyBookie.ag. Quick look at the MyBookie lines for the uh, Thursday night Sweet 16 games. Arizona, a seven and a half point favorite in that early game in L.A. against Clemson. UConn in the early game in Boston, an 11-point favorite over San Diego State. Late game in L.A., North Carolina, a four-point favorite over Alabama. Again, as we mentioned earlier, 173.5 is the total. That's the biggest total by far on the board. And Iowa State, a one-and-a-half-point favorite over Illinois uh, in the late Boston game there. Uh, those are all the Sweet 16 lines for tomorrow night. You can play those games at mybookie.ag. Use code next round when you sign on at mybookie.ag. Code next round. Get that sign on bonus. Use it once. Win with it. It is yours and yours forever. They're at mybookie.ag. Code next round. Mybookie.ag. Code next round. The sun is coming up, starting to kiss Dunaway's oh. face there. Maybe you'll start sh- stop shaking in the second hour. So it's, can you still tell I'm shaking? Uh, just a little bit. That's okay. That's going to warm up when yeah. the sun comes up. It's going to oh. warm up. It's going to be a great day there. I'm trying to talk with my hands a little bit more so it doesn't look like okay, I'm shaking, good, good right? Idea. Yeah, good idea. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to hide the age. Uh, uh, so football, when we return, Richard Hendricks about 15 minutes away. He'll talk more about the game. That is coming up on the next round. Take the next round anywhere you go with official next round gear. Buy yours today at nextround.store. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Gutter Cap. Gutter Cap's that patented aluminum cover system that fits over most existing gutters to keep out debris and eliminate that gutter cleaning. It's back with a lifetime warranty, almost 20 year service record right here in Birmingham. Stay off that dangerous ladder forever. 45% off the retail price now if you call guttercapbirmingham.com. Call my good friend Chris Stewart now, 205 823 2212. Cap it, don't snap it, it's Gutter Cap. It's that time of year. Hoops, hops, and wings with our friends at Walk-Ons. We're talking about the unbelievable madness of the best viewing and the best food in town. This tournament season, try any of the three local walk-ons in Trustville, Stadium Trace in Hoover, and also the Greystone location. A wonderful menu with original food, great drinks, but most importantly in tournament season, TV's everywhere, so you can keep up with how your bracket's burning. Your home for all the tournament action is Walk-On Sports Bistro. NASCAR is returning to Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Hey, let me tell you about our friends at Urology Centers of Alabama. Compassionate and comprehensive urological care with 35 physicians, 17 locations across Alabama. Their patient-centered approach to all of your urological needs. Remember, they've got that new men's health center. It is beautiful, helping men with a wide range of sensitive male issues in a comfortable environment. You can always go online, visit urologycentersalabama.com, schedule an appointment with one of their many urologists today. you got to look your best to play your best, and our friends at Bandwagon can help your team find the perfect uniforms for that upcoming season. Bandwagon is with you every step of the way, from developing your team logo design to choosing from their multitude of samples. You name the sport, they can make it happen. To get your uniform journey started, you can shoot them a message on any social media platform or check out their website, bandwagonsports.com. That's bandwagonsports.com. Next round, listeners, it's time to jump on the bandwagon. Get ready to level up your fandom with the Autograph app. Co-founded by the legendary Tom Brady himself, this app is your one-stop shop for everything college sports. Access to all the best sports content, exciting fan challenges, and exclusive rewards. Think crazy discounts on tickets, limited edition merch, and much more. Just look at this. Autograph hooked up six lucky fans with tickets to the Arkansas-Alabama game for just $16 a ticket, 
That's what they call true fan pricing. Ready to join the party? Download the free Autograph app today and use the code TNR for exclusive access. All right, we continue on the next round. Dunaway out in L.A., courtesy of MyBookie.ag. Code next round to play all the Sweet 16 Elite Eight games right there at MyBookie.ag. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. MyBookie.ag. Code next round. He'll be headed over to Crypto.com Arena later this afternoon. Alabama will have their shoot-around, the second team to shoot-around of the four. And they will also meet the media. Dunaway will be in the locker room with Alabama players. Nate Oates will be on the podium uh, with some Alabama players. So all that at Next Round Live and on tomorrow's show, of course, at Next Round Live, all courtesy of MyBookie.ag. A reminder, urological care is very, very important for all of us, and that's where Urology Centers of Alabama comes into play. 35 urologists on hand at 16 locations across Alabama. They can help you. All your urological needs from prostate health to kidney stones, they will take care of you at Urology Centers of Alabama. See them online, urologycentersalabama.com to schedule an appointment. That's urologycentersalabama.com. All right, Dunaway, let's talk some football. So, so, huh? It's, it's like a day off for me. You're going to read all my commercials too? I mean, It's just easier to uh, do it that way. Man, you're fantastic. Don't get too comfortable, man. You're, uh, I mean, you got to make room for Lance and me to sit beside you still. I mean, you're – don't get too comfortable. Let's, we won't always uh, be on the road. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Let's uh, let's talk some <laughs> let's talk some football. Uh, let's start in Tuscaloosa. A uh, wide receiver is going to be a position of great interest for Alabama this year, and uh, reports from Tide Illustrated out of yesterday's practice that Jalen Hill uh, suffered some sort of leg injury. We uh, I think uh, Kayla DeBoer meets the media tomorrow. I think EG was telling me uh, she's headed over there tomorrow. Uh, so perhaps we'll hear more after that report tomorrow. But, um, you know, Jalen Hill's a guy, Jim, that showed some promise uh, at times last year but never really developed into, you know, a go-to guy uh, in, in a wide receiver core that needed some go-to guys. That's right. You know, they these Alabama receivers, the recruits have been, you know, before the, you know Ryan Williams and them got on campus in his last class, the recruits have been very high, and Jalen Hill is one of those guys it just never turned into production on the field for whatever reason. Uh, but with the new offense and stuff, this was one guy that everyone was circling that maybe he would have one of those big roles um, to be a, a three guy or a four guy, or maybe even as high as a two guy in the receiving core um, with Alabama, but mostly a three or four guy, I think is what they were looking for. And when you hear lower leg injury, it's very, it's very a wide ranging. Uh, but the part of the report that was in there was that an ambulance was called and uh, to the facility. And, you know, you got trainers and everything. Usually an ambulance is called for an injury. That's a transport to a hospital. Um, so that, um, you know, whatever you want to read into that, I'm not a doctor, but uh, the ambulance coming to the, to the facility, that means he was transported somewhere if he was on that ambulance, ambulance and they left the, the facility. But they did call for the ambulance to come, so that makes it look, or at least yeah. sound, according to the report, a little more severe than just a you know a, a high ankle sprain or something like that. Again, Alabama's coaches will uh, speak to the media tomorrow. Uh, Emily Grace McWhorter will be over there, so we'll have some of that for you. Frankly, uh, I don't know. I don't know Kalen DeBoer's policy on commenting on injuries at this point. He has yet to really have to. F- I don't know how he did it at Washington. I didn't pay close enough attention, but. He really hasn't faced that at Alabama, obviously. I mean, they've just now started spring practice. This is the first injury of substance the, in his time at Alabama. So I don't even know how open he'll be at discussing uh, discussing injury situations. He seems like a pretty open guy right now yeah. about everything. So, um, But obviously there's some HIPAA laws when it comes to uh, the signatures you get from the players on what you can and cannot release. I always thought Nick Saban took a very NFL approach to, to injury comments. I thought, thought he was very honest about it. So... Uh, it'll be interesting to see how uh, Kalen handles this uh, moving forward. This will be the first chance we get a peek into that. Uh, all right. At Auburn, this this is not necessarily an Auburn story, but Hugh Freeze has, has come out in support of this. So it does affect Auburn because it's one thing your coach would like to see. Dunaway, the NCAA is considering allowing basically anybody that wants to be a coach on the sideline to be a coach on the sideline. Uh, it would be analyst and offensive coordinator or, or quality control guys could be on the field as coaches. There are limitations now as to guys that can wear headsets, how many can be in the booth, all those things. And it looks like the NCAA is 
loosening some of those restrictions. And Hugh Freeze is one of the coaches that's like, I would love to see this. Yeah, he was on Twitter, X, um, saying that uh, last night and this morning. And listen, you know me. I, I think fewer rules, the better. I'm a uh, I'm a, a libertarian when it comes to rules. Okay. I want very few rules. Right. Just enough to keep me and my football program in safe. That's all I want. <laughs> uh, very few rules. Because you know what? If there are few rules, there's a e- easier chance that you don't break any. Because yep. there are so few rules. That's true. Right? That's true. Um, and, and, and why are we counting coaches? Why are we counting coaches who can be on the field at practice? This is really where it becomes a big, you know, you have these huge staff of quality control guys and, and off the field analysts and all that. Who cares if they're on the practice field? That's up to you, however you manage your practice. Why should I be having to count who's coaching who? Uh, and, you know, all the GAs, all that. If, if you want 100 people on the headset of the game and you can do it and you want that noise in your ear, I know I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Want it. But, I mean, if, but, but if you want to do that, put 100 people on the headset. Sign a coach to every player on the other team if you want to. My guy's coming in. But this, you know, whatever yeah, you want to do. Yeah. However you, but if you're rules, let it work. Let yeah, it roll. But it, this has always been an effort to level the playing field for the haves and the have-nots because what the NCAA feels like is, of course, a school like Alabama under Nick Saban, that's a have. He had an army of coaches. Like, there were – Guys like Charlie Strong, who has been a defensive coordinator all over the SEC, was just like, yeah, I'll be an analyst at Alabama. And they're like, we, you know, we can't allow Alabama to conduct themselves that way when Central Michigan can't. And, I mean, that, that was just an effort. And, by the way, it's rules like that and thinking like that that will one day have the Big Ten and the SEC leading a charge away from the NCAA. The, the one thing SEC schools and Big Ten schools don't want the NCAA is telling them what they cannot do with all of their money, right? And if I've got enough money to do this, I am going to do it. And uh, that is that is one thing that uh, I think will uh, will lead to that split. Now, uh, Tyler is showing you what Hugh Freeze said. If you can't see it, this needs to happen. Our game has changed. There are many young guys who deserve a chance to be developing their career and their families. And that's in response to Ross Dellinger reporting that uh, the NCAA Football Oversight Committee says support staffers, analysts, and quality control guys could be permitted to coach players both in practice and games. Now, Hugh is, pr- is approaching this from this is a great way to develop coaches. I don't think Hugh is wrong about that. But I think every coach thinks I just – another trusted set of eyeballs on the sidelines can only help me. That's exactly right. Uh, developing is one thing that's a good, it's a good comment from Hughes, but, but, but how does it help my team? And I think the more people you have out there, even in the offseason working with them, the better. And you don't get into some bad situations in offseason training like we've seen in the past. So – I, I'm all for this, and I think it's a uh, uh, a tremendous side of growth. I mean, you try to even the playing field. I'm sitting here in Los Angeles with a basketball team that quote unquote set a football school in Alabama, and I don't know how many people could have left a day early than the NCAA was allowing a day early on Tuesday to go to Spokane because they wanted to get their body clocks right, and then to stay out here and take on that cost of staying out here and not flying back to Birmingham and then back to Los Angeles to keep the body clocks right. And um, and then if they win two games, they're going to stay out here a little longer than the NCAA will pay for to go to the final four. Um, you know, the, the the NCAA will pay a certain part of that, but Alabama's picked up the tab on the tweener days here. And, and you know, some programs wouldn't have been able to do that. Oh, no. So even in, you know, even at a football school and basketball, there's haves and have nots and Alabama's out here uh, you know, spending money like they're the haves, right? Well, yeah. I mean, like, I would guarantee you that, you know, in this same situation, UConn would have probably done it that way. Purdue would have. Uh, North Carolina would have. Duke would have. Those are the ones that have the commitment. I mean, you know, had Oakland advanced, Oakland wouldn't have done that. They would have gone back to Michigan and then come back to wherever the Sweet 16 side was. Well, Andy Kennedy was on the show, to your point, he didn't even know what time their flight was leaving the next day. So, I mean, that was yeah. – that, that's a that's a sure sign of a have and a have not there. Yeah, in in the same venue, UAB is having to go to Spain, yeah. Spokane, while while Alabama and Auburn were boarding planes to fly to Spokane, the same venue. Andy was on our show saying we don't even know yet what time our charter that the NCAA hasn't hasn't set it up for us yet. We we we, yep. we don't even know what time we're leaving tomorrow. That's right. Yeah. And meanwhile, two of uh, other teams in our state going to the same place, already getting on the plane, <laughs> heading out to Spokane. Crazy. Uh, by the way, Richard Hendricks coming up. A reminder, coming back uh, to Talladega as NASCAR Dunaway. I know you're excited for the Geico 500, 877-GO-TO-DEGA, talladegasuperspeedway.com. It's going to be fun. 
uh, to see the guys back at the track. Oh, absolutely. It is, Brownie. Um, this is one you're going to have to tell me with the phone number or anything like that, Brownie, if you can. But, 877-GO-TODEGA, uh, Talladega Superspeedway.com. Yeah. yeah, but you've got the Unbelievable High Banks, world's fastest speedway. Uh, you got the garage experience presented by Cool Ray. That is unbelievable. Camping is good. you got racing April 19th through the 21st. It's all right there at Talladega Superspeedway.com. Talladega Superspeedway.com. Let's get ready for racing, and we'll continue our coverage here from Los Angeles as we move on, Brown. That's right. Richard Hendricks about to join us. Dunaway will uh, step aside for a moment. He'll be back with us courtesy of mybookie.ag. Richard Hendricks talks Bama, North Carolina with us next on the next round. Call the next round now at 205-734-0923. This hour of the next round is presented by the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, now featuring seven days of giveaways with your chance to win a share of up to $125,000. The more you visit the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, the more chances you have to win. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Gutter Cap. Gutter Cap's that patented aluminum cover system that fits over most existing gutters to keep out debris and eliminate that gutter cleaning. It's back with a lifetime warranty, almost 20 year service record right here in Birmingham. Stay off that dangerous ladder forever. 45% off the retail price now if you call guttercapbirmingham.com. Call my good friend Chris Stewart now, 205 823 2212. Cap it, don't snap it, it's Gutter Cap. Start your day online with our website, nextroundlive.com, for the latest videos, podcasts, and college football stories. It's also a great way to stream the show or shop in the Next Round store. Stay connected by visiting nextroundlive.com. It's that time of year again. The Legacy Swap and Drop promotion is back. It's bigger than ever. Swap your current auto loan or RV loan to Legacy and drop your interest rate and monthly payment. Don't miss out on this opportunity to save big with our friends at Legacy Credit Union. Not a member yet? That's okay. You too can save by becoming a member today. Head over to SwapAndDrop.com. Apply in minutes. That's SwapAndDrop.com. Or visit one of their nine greater Birmingham area branches. Limited time offer. Terms and conditions may apply. See Credit Union for details. Federally insured by the NCU. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Man, that's a bold question. But it's got that irresistible taste to back it up. One thing's for sure, when you've got an irresistible tasty match like Zero Sugar and Zero Calories, something sensational is bound to happen. It's too bad you can't taste it with your ears because this Coke Zero Sugar tastes amazing. Truthfully, it's hard to put into words, and that's my job. You'll have to take a taste for yourself. Coke Zero Sugar. Best Coke ever? It's that time of year. Hoops, hops, and wings with our friends at Walk-Ons. We're talking about the unbelievable madness of the best viewing and the best food in town. This tournament season, try any of the three local walk-ons in Trussville, Stadium Trace in Hoover, and also the Greystone location. A wonderful menu with original food, great drinks, but most importantly in tournament season, TV's everywhere, so you can keep up with how your bracket's burning. Your home for all the tournament action is Walk-On Sports Bistro. Just because you've quit going to the gym, it doesn't mean that you have to quit gym altogether. Dunaway, that is. With our next round podcasts open 24-7, 365, you can access Jim anytime you'd like. While you may have done away with your treadmill routine, our version of Dunaway is standing by ready to get you back to your absolute best. Find all that lovely Jimmy D-led content on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and in the podcast section of nextroundlive.com. This message is sponsored by Jimmy Crypto Inc. and Jimmy Crypto for President. Jim Dunaway. Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. We start another hour of the next round. Richard Hendricks going to uh, kick this hour off with us. We'll go back to L.A. to talk to Dunaway. A reminder, Coca-Cola spiced at your local convenience store now. The great taste of Coca-Cola, classic you love. Spiced with that raspberry spiced Coke flavor. You can get it at a great convenience store near you. Coca-Cola spiced. Richard, how are you today, my friend? Everything going well? Doing great. Doing great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man, we always appreciate you coming on. I I, I want to go back... It's been far too long for both of us, but uh, coming out of Athens High School, as I remember it, it was down to Alabama and North Carolina for you, right? It was. uh, It definitely was. I still might even have some 
photos or things around here from my visit that I had, but it definitely was a, tor- a tr- tough choice for me to pick Alabama over North Carolina. Uh, Roy Williams recruited me really hard. But, uh, you know, I, I remember back to that moment, going back to 2003, 2004, when I was getting recruited. People ask me all the time, how did you choose Alabama over Carolina with the powerhouse that they are? But you got to remember, Alabama at that time, uh, 2002 SEC champions, 2003, they were the number one team in the country. 2004, they go to the Elite Eight. Uh, we had a top recruiting class with myself and Alonzo G, Ronald Steele in his class in 04. So to me, if you go back to that time, it seemed like a no-brainer that I could hope that I could be a part of uh, a recruiting class that could take Alabama to a Final Four and beyond back in those days. But um, here we are with Alabama and Carolina with a matchup to see who can move forward and see if they can uh, – make a deep run in tournament. Yeah, so let's talk about that game. Richard Hendricks, SEC Network, with us. You can uh, follow him on Twitter at rhendricks35 and uh, keep up with him there at the SEC Network and ESPN. He's on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Um, so for Alabama to win this game, let's start with a Reitzel injury. Uh, if, if Reitzel cannot go, what is Alabama's best hope of attack? Because you don't have the five you want out there. What, what's the best attack for Nate Oates there, do you think? Well, they have to continue to do what they do. I mean, which is going to be to try to play up tempo and shoot the ball early from the outside on the three, try to penetrate and get into the paint off the pick and roll. The game plan really can't change at this point. There's no more practices. Alabama is not a team that plays with a lot of style uh, diversity. You, You see what they can do. What they have to do is make sure that they can defend well. And the issue is going to be with Armando Baycott and what he can do on the inside. Alabama has struggled against teams that have really good post play. Uh, so it's about to be a challenge for Grant Nelson. Grant Nelson will have to be the key in this game. If he can give you production offensively, which he struggled to do in the first couple of games, and he also hold his on defensively if they play him at the five. Nick Pringle will also have to show up big as he did some big things in the Grand Canyon game. But that will be the key to the game. Not having Reitzel will be huge not having an outside shooter and another ball handler to take the pressure off for Sears and Estrada. But uh, if Alabama is going to win this game, they have to hand, do well defensively on the boards as well as try to get off to a fast start and play from in front. If they get from behind, then North Carolina can dictate tempo and it can be challenging for the tide. From what you know of Nate Oates, would he ever approach it with this mindset of, look, I've got uh, Pringle, I've got Grant Nelson, I've got Wagi, I've got Mohammed, I got Diabate. That's 20 fouls, and we may have to use all 20 of them. I mean, is, is that an approach where you just beat up Baycott and make him uncomfortable? It should be, and it won't be surprising if he does have that mentality. You, you see what um, Mo Diabate can do coming into the game and be impactful down the stretch. This is playoff basketball. It's win or go home. You don't want to leave those fouls. You don't want to leave anything in your bag if you're a head coach on the table. You have to be willing to make a quick adjustments, roll with it, and try to do whatever you can to win the game. So when you have the depth on your roster, uh, you have to be willing to use it. One thing I love about Nate Oates is the fact that he's always confident. He believes in his team. He believes that he has a chance, and even if you're one man down, it's next man up, and you have to execute the game plan. Mo Diabate had some basketball moves I didn't know he had. I mean, some of the stuff he did, uh, he, they don't win that game without him, but, man, some of the stuff he did when they would feed him the ball, I, I did not know Mo had that kind of game or yet. Well, well, you know what happens is when you get late in the season, your freshman year, you've been practicing all year long, you have become a little bit – you've become adjusted to the style – and you get to the end of the season, you're playing with house money. Yeah. It's always that way. It's a mentality that it's win or go home. I have nothing else to lose. I might as well give it what I have. And for him, he had it going in a big time way. When you know that you have to be counted on to win the game and move forward, players usually have their game rise up to another level. And he did that. And you got to hope that he can continue to have that confidence so he can be a contributor in this next game against Carolina. Richard Hendricks is with us at R Hendricks 35 on Twitter is where you follow him. You see him on the SEC Network and ESPN. He's with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. All right, so let's go to the positive side of that. I don't want to just focus on the negative. Reitzel doesn't play. Let's assume Reitzel can play, and now you've got that four-guard lineup with Grant Nelson on the inside. It seems to me uh, the key then is I, if I'm Alabama, i got to start hitting – got to keep hitting the outside shots. That draws Carolina out a little bit defensively, opens up some of those driving lanes. Maybe then you can take it at Baycott and get him in foul trouble in that situation. 
Well, you, well, you definitely have the advantage because now you have the cross match situation that you have to have their bigs have to guard the guards. And with Reitzel, with his unlimited range, he's shooting at a high uh, percentage and he can handle the ball. And more than anything, it's his defensive pressure that is needed. When, when you have so many players who now can press up into the ball, switch all the ball screens, do a really good job of turning, making things difficult on the other team, uh, that's to the benefit. Carolina has players. It's not a team that can play slow down and just walks the ball up the court. They can. They can throw it in the post, but they also would, uh, can, can take a fast-paced game of basketball. So you got to hope if you're Alabama, you're talking about drawing them into something, you have to draw North Carolina into playing Alabama style of game. If you can do that and sustain it for a long period of time, Alabama has a good chance. But if Reitzel is healthy, that definitely increases uh, the chances for them to to come up with the upset. Yeah, the uh, and I don't know, you know, I'm not, I don't know how closely you follow like the gambling numbers, but the the, the total points, it's like 19 more in Vegas than any other game of the Sweet 16. Wow. So so the expectation, wow. yeah, I mean, it's like 173 for the two teams combined. So the expectation is this is going to be a high scoring game. I don't think anybody thinks it's going to be a low scoring game. Yeah, well, I don't follow it too much, but I definitely know that Alabama is going to have the advantage that they can try to get the score up. Uh, they had the free-flowing game in the first game against Charleston, and then they had a different type of game that was much more physical in the second one against Grand Canyon. That's a good thing in the NCAA tournament. When you get to see two different styles, now you know that you need to be prepared for anything. And North Carolina can play both ways. But like I said, R.J. Davis can fill it up. You have to hope that they fall into playing that style that Alabama wants to play, getting up and down. If you can do that, now, like I'm saying, you have the advantage into their side, but it's still going to boil down to what they can do in stopping uh, the big man down low with Baycott. Richard Hendricks is with us, SEC Network. A couple more things before you go. Uh, that's great insight on Bama, North Carolina. Let's talk about the other SEC team alive in Tennessee as they take on Creighton. Tennessee, a small favorite in that game. Um, I, I mentioned yesterday when your buddy Ron Slay was on, Dalton Connect, two of the last three games has struggled from beyond the arc. Uh, he was really good against St. Peter's, but in that first round loss that you saw up in Nashville against State, he made basically nothing from beyond the arc. And until very late in the Texas game, really nobody for Tennessee made anything from beyond the arc. I, I, I guess that's concerning. I don't know if a few days off changes that, but two of the last three games, Connect has struggled to find his range. I mean, it, it can be concerning, but a player of that caliber can get back get it going hot. I mean, he's had a couple of days to rest between uh, the first two rounds and now moving into the Sweet 16. A little bit concerning, but if you look at that Mississippi State team, if you ever see them physically, to me, that is the most impressive team in the SEC. When they have players that can get physical with anyone, they can run you off the three-point line. They, they have a, a fighting mentality uh, from head coach Chris Jan, so they really made it difficult on Dalton Connect for him to get comfortable. You can't allow a player who has that type of ability to play free. You can't let him. You have to get up in him and make it difficult on him. Now, I do think with Creighton, Creighton has a really good team. They're well coached. They have size on the inside, but he might be able to get back into his shooting form. But to see two teams, Alabama and Tennessee, at this point in the Sweet 16, Tennessee, as I've said all season long, is built for this type of play in the tournament. You have to have some type of inside presence and defensive toughness and veteran guard play. They have that. They have all three of those attributes. They have been able to win in a tough game, in a grind-out game, in the last game against Texas. That's something you need. That's character building. You get a chance to regroup, have a little bit of chance to watch some film and prepare a little bit longer for the opponent. So I would still say, that they have the upper hand against a well-coached and a strong Creighton team that's full of talent. Uh, looking ahead real quick, because we would not be able to talk to you before this happened, I'm curious if you think they have the the inside game to play with Edie and Purdue. If that is who they play in the Elite Eight for a chance to go to the Final Four, if, if Purdue beats Gonzaga and Tennessee beats Creighton, do are they built to play with Edie and Purdue? I don't think that anyone is built to play with a guy seven foot four, 300 yeah. pounds, and has really improved his game this year. Much more agility. They're not just throwing it to him down low. And as a slow guy who had to set up the offense to run around, he can get into pick and roll sets. He even moves his feet defensively, switching out. I mean, this guy really has taken his game to another level. And he, I've always thought that Purdue is the favorite that I think to win this tournament, mainly because of the motivation from last season getting outed in the first round of Fairleigh Dickinson in a 116 game. 
Uh, Tennessee does have strength. You talk about Owaka on the inside coming off the off the bench. Um, Jonas Adu being around seven foot and having length. They can make it difficult and strong bodied guards. But if you talk about the shooting, if they're going to get it done, that's going to have to be the way. You're going to have to have big performances. Santiago Vescovi is going to have to shoot the ball well from out. Josiah Jordan James is going to have to hit some shots outside for Tennessee. It's going to have to be a collective thing from the Tennessee balls to get it done if they are able to advance and if Purdue is able to advance. Yeah. Because in March Madness, you can't take anything for granted. That's why they play the game. It'd be funny, you know, Gonzaga has has been plagued by the fact that they never could get that championship, and I don't know that they can this year, but I'll tell you what, man, through two games, they have been dominant. Uh, they just, they worked Kansas. I mean, this, this Gonzaga team looks about as good as any Gonzaga team we've seen in the tournament. You know, a lot of these things are always wide open. And, yeah. you know, you have a great coach, Mark Few. He's been doing it for a long time. That's a program that is used to winning. Obviously, so many sweet 16s. I believe it might be nine out of the last 10, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe might be nine consecutively. This is a program that has it in their DNA to turn it on in March and play really good basketball. They're connected. They play strong. They have the inside presence as well with EK. Uh, they have the components that you need to be a really good team, particularly in March. It's hard to win in March. And when you're relying on outside shooting, that makes it difficult. You have to have some inside play that can get some offensive rebound, get some tough baskets, can grind it out because the teams get better every round you move forward. You're playing in a different gym with different balls. It's hard to find the outside shot. That is the one thing that does concern me with Alabama as they don't have that consistent inside play. But if you look at the other teams that consistently make deep runs in the tournament, they're built for it. Uh, Gonzaga, as you mentioned, there's another one that's built for it and been playing really good ball. All right, before you go, uh, Richard Hendricks with us, SEC Network. You've watched a lot of John Calipari at Kentucky. They make the commitment uh, for another year. Were you surprised that that was the route Mitch Barnhart uh, went yesterday? No. I, I mean, where are you going to go? I, I mean, that's that's how I look at it. You have an outstanding, huge buyout. Yeah. You have a Hall of Fame-level coach. The dilemma for Kentucky is do you want to win – in a style that is not necessarily something that is fun to watch and without the next wave of NBA superstars on the roster. What wins in college basketball is not always what is the correlation between what's making NBA pros. So you look at what Calipari has been able to do. You're recruiting the high school guys. They're really good players. They draft younger players into the NBA. The Kentucky fan base has become used to watching tomorrow's pros today on their court. If you want a team that's going to win on the collegiate level, you have to look at the model of all the other successful teams. They're building through the portal. They have older players. You see 24 and 25 year old guards out here. Uh, you have players that are not really NBA draft prospects. If you look at last year with UConn and Adam Sonogo, one of the better players, not drafted top players in the game, not draft worthy picks. So it's a dilemma that you have to make pros that you're going to see next year's NBA players, young players, McDonald's All-Americans, or older players that you get from the portal who've been seasoned, who are better milked for the maturity that it takes to make deep runs in the NCAA tournament. For me, Kyle's been doing a tremendous job. They have the pressure of Kentucky. You always want to Final Fours and beyond. But it's hard to win. Even the best coaches in the history don't really win that many national championships. So you want to see them back on the, in the big show, but at the same time, when you're doing it with the McDonald's All-Americans and the top recruits, it's hard to get the youth to really be able to turn it up for those three weekends in uh, March. Very well said, Richard Hendricks, SEC Network. Always a uh, great time talking with you, Richard. We really appreciate the time. Thank you, guys. All right, buddy, take care. Richard with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com. Hotline reminder – Johnston RV Center has repriced everything on the lot, and they are so confident in their pricing that they are going to give you a nationwide guarantee. You bring them a price of a comparable RV that is lower than anything you can find on their lot, they are going to match any comparable RV price and beat it even at Johnston RV Center. Don't forget, RV Warranty Forever gives you a lifetime warranty on all new and used under two years of age. 
You could see all of that at Johnston RV Center, I-65, exit 304 in Coleman, 334 indicator, always online, johnstonrvcenter.com. Kevin says in the chat room, if Shaq got ref like Edie, he would have averaged 50 points a game at LSU, saying uh, Edie gets away with a little bit. Um, the Alabama-North Carolina game, Krusty says, this is going around on uh, social media yesterday. ESPN's got some sort of predictor they use. Even though Carolina is a four-point favorite for a little bit yesterday, I think the ESPN predictor had Alabama with a better chance of winning. It's essentially 50-50. I don't know how much I put into that. You know, Vegas is not always right. The ESPN predictor is not always right, so I really don't know how much to uh, put in that. Land My Believer would like to see Kalkbrenner versus Edie. He said, I also would have loved to have seen Bediaco versus Edie. Uh, you didn't get to see the first one. Maybe you'll see the second one. We'll see. That Creighton-Tennessee game is a fun game. I was going to look at mybookie.ag right now. Uh, my bookie, I think, still holding Tennessee as a one-and-a-half, two-point favorite uh, in that game coming up there in the uh, Sweet 16. Yeah, Tennessee a two-and-a-half point favorite now. Tennessee a two-and-a-half point favorite over the Creighton Blue Jays. Rockstar, get that bell ready. You and I tonight will be doing what? It, don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. Just it. Do it. Just do it. Just do it. Tri- Trivia. <laughs> Trivia. That's right. <laughs> Odie Stafford, Crestline Village. We'll start around 8 o'clock. It's just me and Rockstar. Everybody's gone for spring break, but if you're one of the poor saps that has to not go to the beach spring break, you come to Trivia uh, with me and Rockstar. Odie's Tavern is where you find us at Odie's Tavern, Crestline Village. We'll start about 8 o'clock. Great place to go for lunch as well today. I uh, get that uh, Diablo sandwich that we love, Rodney's cheeseburger, the south of the border roll up, big cup cocktails there at Odie's Tavern, Crestline Village, and Edgewood there in Mount Brook. You'll see me at Rocky at Crestline Village tonight. We head back out to LA. Jimmy D rejoins us from uh, the shadows of Crypto.com Arena, where Alabama <laughs> will play in the Sweet 16. That's next on the next round. Everything Alabama, all the time. Subscribe and set alerts at Roll Tide Pods on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. You could win a Cadillac CT5 or your share of $25,000 in free play and cash at Birmingham Racecourse Casino. The more you visit, the more chances you have to win. Play the latest, most exciting games around with fun bonuses and big jackpots. You can be a winner, too. Come win your share during the Cadillac CT5 and $25,000 giveaway at Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Drawings April 5th and 6th. Located off I-459, exit 31, Derby Parkway. Must be 21 or older, must be present to win. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Gutter Cap. Gutter Cap's that patented aluminum cover system that fits over most existing gutters to keep out debris and eliminate that gutter cleaning. It's back with a lifetime warranty, almost 20 year service record right here in Birmingham. Stay off that dangerous ladder forever. 45% off the retail price now if you call guttercapbirmingham.com. Call my good friend Chris Stewart now, 205 823 2212. Cap it, don't snap it, it's Gutter Cap. You gotta look your best to play your best. And our friends at Bandwagon can help your team find the perfect uniforms for that upcoming season. Bandwagon is with you every step of the way, from developing your team logo design to choosing from their multitude of samples. You name the sport, they can make it happen. To get your uniform journey started, you can shoot them a message on any social media platform or check out their website, bandwagonsports.com. That's bandwagonsports.com. Next round, listeners, it's time to jump on the bandwagon. Hey, let me tell you about our friends at Urology Centers of Alabama. Compassionate and comprehensive urological care with 35 physicians, 17 locations across Alabama. Their patient-centered approach to all of your urological needs. Remember, they've got that new men's health center. It is beautiful, helping men with a wide range of sensitive male issues in a comfortable environment. You can always go online, visit urologycentersalabama.com, schedule an appointment with one of their many urologists today. Get ready to level up your fandom with the Autograph app. Co-founded by the legendary Tom Brady himself, this app is your one-stop shop for everything college sports. Access to all the best sports content, exciting fan challenges, and exclusive rewards. Think crazy discounts on tickets, limited edition merch, and much more. Just look at this. Autograph hooked up six lucky fans with tickets to the Arkansas-Alabama game for just $16 a ticket. That's what they call true fan pricing. Ready to join the party? Download the free Autograph app today and use the code TNR for exclusive access. You never know what we're up to here at the next round. The easiest way to stay in the know with our antics and adventures is to follow the next round across all social media platforms at Next Round Live on Facebook, 
Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Whether it's Dunaway sleeping in the studio, Tim and Lunsford breaking down the latest movie release, or Game Day Chronicles, we are here to keep you updated on the latest sports news while, of course, having just a little bit of fun. Follow at Nexeron Live across all platforms to join in. We continue on the next round. Jim Dunaway with us from LA, presented by MyBookie.ag, code next round. MyBookie.ag, code next round. Play all the games there at MyBookie.ag tonight or tomorrow night. Arizona, a seven and a half point favorite over Clemson. UConn, an 11 point favorite over San Diego State. Carolina, a four point favorite over Bama. And Iowa State, a point and a half favorite over Illinois. Again, that Alabama total, 173 and a half. Richard Hendricks just telling us Dunaway, obviously, if you're Alabama, more scoring the better. I think they would prefer a high-scoring track meet type game. I would agree. Um, I've changed locations before we talk about that. Help me out on the – my camera shot okay? You tell me left or right. A little our, to our your left. And listeners. Just bump a little to the little. left. A little to my left, yep, like to this your left. No, no, other way, other way, other way, other way. Other way. A okay, little wait. bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Why'd you change places? A little bit more. Uh, sunshine, Brownie. Oh, yeah. I came to the sunshine. <laughs> okay, a little bit more. Just, to, just a hair more. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rockstar, can we, can we live with that, Tyler? We're good. We're good. Yeah. All right. A lot. Lock okay, it in okay. there. Lock it in. Don't move again. Yeah. Are you by the pool? Uh, well, I mean. Uh, not about the pool. Have you ordered yet? I found some cactus. <laughs> Can you tell I'm in a uh, in an outdoor calf area? We're, we're at One Cow Plaza, guys. You know, yeah, hey, I mean, uh, Rockstar, you know yeah, One Cow I mean, Plaza. And when you're at One Cow Plaza, right. you got to move. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay, you're making fun of my country accent. Okay, One Cow Plaza. Plaza, yeah, it was much better. Much better yes. uh, and, and, and it was colder on the lower level, so I moved to the top or top level where the sun was. Yeah. So now I'm a little too hot. Well, to I, <laughs> this is the finished Dunaway right here. Uh, well, <laughs> JA wants to know if you put some SPF on that noggin. Are you gonna be okay? I have not. I have yeah, not. Yeah. I have not. But I, it feels a lot better. I'll take the I'll take the skin color over the uh, the shaking hands, but. Um, hey, everybody's starting to wake up out here. Traffic's Good. picking up. Uh, we'll do weather on the 8th. But, uh, <laughs> somebody asked me in the chat um, how cold was it. Uh, when I started out here, I went back and checked. It was 49 degrees. And it was 53 just a few seconds ago before I got into the sun. So uh, it was chilly. It was chilly, man. Yeah. I, think I didn't pack for this. But uh, back to your question. What was your question? Uh, the tra- I was just going to – let me make a point before I go back to that question. Uh, sometimes – these games sometimes they'll use the elite eight as a test run for one of those these football stadiums for a final four you're not getting that this year and i think that's good for alabama i don't think you would want to try to have a good shooting day and want to you know if they were trying to do this at sofi or something like this as a test run for a final four uh the fact that this game will be played at crypto.com arena and by the way in boston it's played at uh td arena where uh where the celtics play american airlines arena where the mavs play in dallas and little caesars arena where the pistons play in detroit so it's going to be in nba arenas so first of all i'll say i think that's that this i mean it's not going to be the difference in the game but i don't think alabama would want to try shooting in some football stadium uh in this round yeah your point is the shooting backgrounds if you're a high scoring team uh, when you play in the big dome or football stadiums like you will at the Final Four, it ends up being a, a, a detriment to, you know, the shooting backgrounds are so deep, so awkward, the high ceilings, the dome stadium, upper decks that you don't have that size in, in college basketball or even the NBA becomes a tough shooting background. Now, teams adjust and the ones that win championships uh, make it work, but it is different if you're a team that shoots as many threes as Alabama wants to to have that kind of shooting background. This will be more like what they saw up in Nashville than what they would see in the Final Four, like when Auburn was in Minneapolis. Yeah. Uh, now, I will say this. Alabama did, in their day off, when they first got to L.A., they went to Crypto.com Arena and watched the Clippers play. The whole team went. Um, they were fans. They didn't get out there and shoot around. They've done that. Uh, they'll do that a little bit later on today. 
Um, but they went there. So you get, you get a feel for your place. You sit there, you dream a little bit, you know, Ryland Griffin was sitting there watching the Clippers play an NBA game on the same, in the same arena he's going to play on Thursday night. So I'm sure he's sitting there, you know, dreaming of the backdrop, dreaming of shooting in that arena and you get a little juice flowing. So they've been in the facility before they practiced yesterday at USC. They worked out yesterday at USC's facility. And, and now they'll go over to crypto a little bit later on this morning and get a workout in um, on the actual facility on the floor they'll play in coming up on Thursday night. No, what, what I started with was what we just talked about, Richard Hendricks. Uh, you know, I brought up the total to him again at mybookie.ag. It's 173 and a half, a, a full 19 points more than the next closest total in the Sweet 16. And Richard said in his mind, Alabama would prefer it to be a track meet. Uh, get this game in the hundreds and take your chances rather than try to win a game in the 60s or 70s against North Carolina. A hundred percent, because uh, if you just said Alabama played a game in the Sweet 16, uh, excuse me, in the uh, round of 32 where the total was 113, um, I would have yeah. said, man, it was a good season. They made it back to the tournament, but <laughs> they didn't advance probably, right? They played into somebody's defensive side, and that wasn't this team. So that Alabama survived that game. Maybe they'll play one more at their speed coming up against North Carolina and challenge the depth of North Carolina a little bit. You know, this is a blue blood program, no doubt. Um, but, you know, one of the reasons everyone liked Auburn so much was the depth of their roster. Well, you want to challenge North Carolina uh, depth as well. I mean, the, the, the guys they bring, bring off the bench, is the guy behind Baycott going to be as good as Baycott? If you're running up and down the floor, the big guy's got a lot to carry up and down the floor, right? Uh, you know, is, is their sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth guy? Uh, is that where Alabama possibly could take advantage with a Mo Diabate or somebody like that off the bench? You, you never know what that works out. Or maybe Sears and Estrada can play all night long and, and keep bombing threes all night long. Sears isn't af- afraid to play 40 whole minutes, right? No, not so, at all. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so run it up and down the floor. That's Alabama's best chance. Uh, I, I want you uh, – you're going to tell us about NASCAR here, but uh, I, wa- I want to talk about what this would mean for Nate Oates if they can get a win over North Carolina in the Sweet 16. Uh, beyond just, oh, he's in the Elite Eight. Yeah, obviously, anybody can tell you that. But what would this mean for Nate Oates at Alabama? But first, uh, Dunaway NASCAR is returning to Talladega. 877-GO-TO-DEGA, talladegasuperspeedway.com to get your spot at the GEICO 500 weekend. Yeah, you know, they make a couple of trips uh, out here to the West Coast where I am uh, throughout the cor- course of the year. But even fans all over the place, and I, I don't know if this is a thing again or not, but as I was at the uh, LAX carousel yesterday, I saw a guy in a uh, Hooters racing jacket, a Kyle Busch racing jacket, the old m M&M jacket, and one other jacket. I can't remember who it was, but three different NASCAR jackets. Uh, remember when they were so popular? Oh, yeah. Still a few fans. Still a few fans have them. Uh, it's the same uh, wheel that I was picking up out here. I almost asked, are you with a race team? Why are you having this on? But uh, they're just big NASCAR fans all over the country and all over the country. They talk about the Talladega experience and that's what you can get wherever you're watching us. April 19th through the 21st. Just go to talladegasuperspeedway.com talladegasuperspeedway.com 877-GO-TO-DEGA and you can experience two races on Saturday, ARCA and the uh, Xfinity Series and then the big Geico 500 on Sunday with the Cup Drivers camping all week long, all the way from the most exotic camping to the primitive camping. They've got all sites, uh, all kinds of lots set up for you. And don't forget to upgrade your ticket to the, to the garage experience presented by cool Ray, where you can actually separated by a short fence, stand in the garage of your favorite NASCAR driver and watch the crew work on the cars and maybe even chat the driver up a little bit. It's part of the garage experience at Talladega, Talladega, superspeedway.com. TalladegaSuperspeedway.com, 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Brownie. All right, so if Alabama gets the win here, as Landmine Believer points out, Alabama's 1-9 and nine in Sweet 16 games. That's a lot of pain. That is a lot of pain. They have made that one trip to the Elite Eight. So, you know, for Alabama, there are a lot of fans don't even remember that Mark Gottfried, Antoine Petway led Elite Eight trip. So this would be something new for a bunch of Alabama fans. Um, and even those that remembered, it has been so long <laughs> For Alabama playing in the Elite Eight. So I know what it would mean for the school. Let's talk about Nate Oates particularly, Dunaway. It's not going to mean a contract extension. He's already gotten that. What what tangibly do you feel like this means for Nate Oates if he can get this program to the Elite Eight? Well, first off, it uh, you know it makes him arguably uh, the best coach uh, for the number of years he's put in. Nobody's put in the number Wimp has. 
but it would arguably make him the best coach in Alabama basketball history at that point. Well, let, let, um, I, I want to stop. Yeah, I want to stop right there. So you think a trip to the Elite Eight? He's only this is only year five. That would be two Sweet Sixteens and an Elite Eight in four tournaments that they've had in his five years there. You would think that would already put him in that discussion. Yeah, because look what he's done with two SEC regular season yeah. and tournament championships, the clean sweep in two years uh, there. And then you take this team, uh, and by the way, it would be such a NCAA tournament thing that this team made it to the Elite Eight or the Final Four. Um, you know, I don't think anybody, it's not Nate Oates, I think, would if he was being honest, would say this is not my best team. Uh, and Alabama fans would say Mark Gottfried had better teams yep. than the one that went to the Elite Eight. Uh, and Wimp would tell you, I had better teams than any of these guys. Um, and I don't think anybody would argue that. I think Wimp had some of the best teams in Alabama history. It just didn't shake out to where they went to the Elite Eight. Mark Godfrey's team did. And by the way, that Mark Godfrey's team, the year they went, sort of reminds you of this team. I don't think anybody went to that tournament thinking that team, that that team was going to go to the Elite Eight, but that's the team that did it. Uh, so I, I, I think it would start, you know, some people would disagree. Some people would say it was still Wimp. Some people would say, I don't think anybody says it's Mark Godfrey. I think it comes down to Wimp uh, and eventually Nate Oates. Do you disagree? Do you not think um, it comes down at some point to Wimp or Nate Oates? I think eventually it does. I don't know if we would be there quite yet with just a trip to the Elite Eight. But, you know, Wimp only won the SEC regular season one time, and Oates would now have won it twice, obviously. Uh, Wimp did win five SEC tournaments. Oates already has two of those. Uh, Wimp yep. was never the overall number one seed. Nate Oates was that. Uh, Wimp never went to the Elite Eight. If Oates can win tomorrow night, he's in the Elite Eight. I mean, I think there's an argument to be had. I probably still say it's Wimp, but I say it's Wimp, but it's inevitable that it is going to be Oates at some point, that Wimp is only holding on to this title, you know, for a very short period of time. I don't foresee a scenario where Oates remains the coach at Alabama and he doesn't surpass, if he can make the Elite Eight or the Final Four, he doesn't surpass... Uh, whatever Wimp has done there. I just I don't see that scenario as long as Oates stays as the head coach at Alabama because even if he never makes the Elite Eight, heck, if he makes six Sweet Sixteens, that matches what Wimp has done. I, I just don't foresee a scenario where if he stays at Alabama, he doesn't eventually pass everything that Wimp has done to become the best coach at Alabama. Yeah, and, and I don't disagree with that. But as I said yesterday, um, we don't have to choose. You know, Wimp was great sure. uh, for what he did in his time, like Bear Bryant was great for what he did in his time, and then came Nick Saban. And, you know, you hope Nate Oates can match and pass what Wimp does. It doesn't take away from anything from what Wimp Sanderson did for Alabama basketball. There are fans that still go to the games in Tuscaloosa that just rave about the Plaid Palace and everything Wimp Sanderson did. Those were glory days of Alabama basketball. They were so much fun. And I will say this. Um, just recently do I think the SEC has gotten back to being as competitive as the SEC was back when Wimp was. He won that one SEC regular season when he was winning five SEC tournaments, uh, the Wimp Invitational. I think the SEC was very competitive top to bottom back then. And just now do I think we're getting back to where the SEC is as competitive, competitive top to bottom as it was in Wimp's day. Uh, back in the day. Those were some glory days in SEC basketball. I feel like we're back into that now with just the diversity of programs that are winning championships. You know, you, you want me to give you a hidden benefit? And you may have been getting to this, and I apologize if I'm stepping on your toes here, but a, a hidden benefit of Nate Oates making it to the Elite Eight. And then if, you, if, if he's fortunate enough to advance past that, Alabama is, and make it to the Final Four, what a better time for Greg Byrne to go get in people's pockets for that arena. Like, look, you know, this guy has committed to us long term. He's got an $18 million buyout. He, you know, Michigan, Ohio State, Louisville all came open. We have kept him. Um, we've got to live up to our end of the bargain right here. You just saw him play in the Elite Eight. You just saw him play in the Final Four. Now's the time we got to finish. We got to close the gap on this arena. I don't know that it would, it would close the gap, but I think there would never be a better time for Greg Byrne to go be getting in people's pockets if Alabama could somehow advance to the Elite Eight or the Final Four. Okay, don't mishear me here, and don't misquote me, and, and Taylor, make sure we we put the whole thing out here. Okay, right, I'm going to be I quiet. I'm just going to let you go. Yeah. yeah. I, I have not been told by Nate Oates this, and I have not been told by Greg Byrne this. I just believe that the new arena is a bigger deal to fans 
than it is to Nate Oates. And I think you've been hearing rumblings of the same thing, that Nate Oates is concerned about practice facilities, locker rooms, salaries for his coaches, NIL. Um, and, and it's not as important to him as a lot of fans and maybe media people make it out to be that Nate Oates is very comfortable in the here and now and winning basketball games. And, and at one point, I believe Alabama had to have a new arena to keep him. I really don't think that's the case. The closer I've gotten to this program in the last two years, I think Nate Oates uh, is very comfortable in Coleman Coliseum as long as he's got a good NIL to work with uh, and can recruit and can recruit great coaches to be with him and have good facilities for them to be with. I don't think they necessarily have to have a huge new arena to, uh, to keep Nate Oates in Tuscaloosa. We've seen that. You know, Greg Burns able anytime he wants, it looks like to go out and get more money and, and get this guy signed to a new contract with no shovel in the ground on a new arena. So I think Nate Oates is very committed to Alabama basketball with or without the new arena. Um, and I will tell you, I'm, I'm getting to the point, and this is going to be so unpopular, I'm getting to the point where I would be okay with just a little redesign to where you just you tell some big money people, we got to move your seats. And you come in and you redesign a little bit. The only thing, the only thing wrong with Col- Coleman Coliseum Brown, the only thing is the students aren't where the students are at the best venues in college basketball. That's the only thing that separates it. Uh, I mean, the, the infrastructure is old and everything. But my God, when, when did they build Cameron Indoor, right? The fact that at Cameron Indoor, those students run all the way down and they are a big part of the basketball game. At Auburn, those students run all the way down. They're a big part of the basketball game, and it looks fantastic on television. A small redesign of Coleman Coliseum where you got the students running all the way down, and they're a big part of the basketball game. I think that changes the way Coleman Coliseum looks to- totally. So I personally, if I was in charge of Alabama basketball, would focus more on keeping the NIL strong, which isn't a problem right now, keeping recruiting strong, keeping his salary strong, his assistant salary strong, the facilities, the practice facilities that they have and all that strong. And, um, you know, if the arena comes, the arena comes. If not, let's let's just get the students redesign Coleman Coliseum on the side of the court and roll with what you got. Well, I would say this now. He has brought it up on our show himself numerous times. So I – so that, that is contrary to the actual arena. I mean, that's contrary to – but maybe he's moved on from that. I don't know. I mean, again, it, it does not appear to be something he's trying to leverage to stay at Alabama because anytime – I mean, the last two years he's gotten a contract extension. <laughs> and in both those contract extensions, he has, mar- he has made a commitment to Alabama in the size of the, his buyout, the buyout that it takes to take him away. That, that takes leverage off the table for him. I mean, he can't leverage jobs against Alabama – with, with that size of a buyout. So, I mean, he has shown a commitment to Alabama. Uh, so maybe, he, I, I don't think he's ever used the arena to say, if I don't get some promises on this new arena, I'm taking the Louisville job, or I'm taking the Ohio State job, or I'm taking the Michigan job. It doesn't appear that he's ever done that because the last two years, he's agreed to a contract extension before the season was even over. Yeah, but it, like if you and Reed uh, and LT walked in one day and said, man, we need, we need a new studio. And even if I didn't think we needed a new studio, right. but if you guys said we needed a new studio, I'd be like, anytime anybody asked me, I was like, yeah, you know, we're working towards a new studio. Um, you know, maybe that's the role Nate Oates is playing. Maybe, you know, new arena would be, who doesn't want a new arena? But do you have to have it? I don't think you do. I do think at some point, uh, and uh, this will be unpopular too, uh, with my media friends, some who are out here in Los Angeles with me, uh, that section of Coleman Coliseum where the media sits right. that is right there, right there in the television uh, camera. Every time you come to this end of the floor, you got to get those people the hell out of there. That's a dead looking part of the arena. And it's always in the shot at that end of the floor. You got to flip that somewhere else, move the media up to the Raptors or, or somewhere else. You got to get them out of that shot and put some real human bodies in there. Maybe some more students in that. Set. I don't know. But you gotta you gotta move. That's a dead spot on television. It just doesn't look the same on television. So I think there's some cheaper aesthetics you could do to Coleman Coliseum well, you got, than to build a whole new arena. You got some people drafting with you here now. AM Golfer is right. NL, NIL support is more important to Oates than a new arena. Hundred percent agree with that. But I I think yeah, he's been yeah. able to get 
the NIL support he desires. I mean, Alabama has shopped in the transfer portal and they've gotten guys they've wanted. Um, and maybe I'm just not aware of a guy that they have missed because of NIL that they had a legit shot at. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. But it feels like when Oates is going in the portal, he's been able to convince guys to come to Tuscaloosa. Um, Patrick says, if you could get the students on top of the floor, it would be fine. Um, I was going to try. Oh, uh, Daniel says, what makes Cameron great is precisely why a new arena is needed. You just can't reverse engineer Coleman that easily, he says. So I don't know. Uh, Zach says, Coleman is fine. It's amazing with 15,000 people. They can make it work. Um, Patrick yeah. says, uh, Jimmy Architect now on the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the first time I design, de- uh, design something for horror construction will be my, uh, the next time will be my first yeah, time. Yeah, be but, your first project. Um, though, yeah. Y- yeah, but it seems to me like you could uh, kick out some of those seats right behind where Chris Stewart and the gang sits uh, and then somehow build it on a different kind of slant to pack the students in right there. And maybe, you know, you take, lose a few rows, lose a few of the capacity and then sort of grade it up and get it to a section there to, you know, a little cheaper. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see if there is a solution to that. Maybe there is. Maybe there is not. We're going to do four downs when we return. <laughs> what? You know, you know what Mont- you know what Montevallo is not known for? What? It's engineering school. <laughs> it's not known for its engineering school. You did not get an engineering yeah. degree, did you? Uh, EG I is, did not. EG is going to jump in here with four downs when we return. Dunaway will uh, stay on with us from L.A. to participate in that. Don't forget, uh, uh, birmingham.woodhousespas.com. That is the website you go to for Woodhouse Spas. When you go to that website, you can buy a gift card. If you want to give a gift of a spa treatment, you can book an appointment for yourself or for your loved one. 10 to 8 every single day, um, Monday through um, Friday, and then Saturday, or excuse me, Monday through Saturday, and then Sunday, 11 to 6 at Woodhouse Spas. Birmingham.woodhousespas.com. Birmingham.woodhousespas.com. Four downs with an interesting celebrity birthday question for everyone. That is next on the next round. Everything next round is on demand now in the podcast section at nextroundlive.com. Man, I love a good meal. I'm Jim Dunaway. A good meal is what you get with my friend Sterling at Champy's Chicken on Highway 119 in Alabaster. We're talking great southern fried chicken, wonderful sides, hand-cut chicken fingers, poor boys, and those Mississippi Delta recipe tamales. You've got a perfect menu for everybody. Champy's Chicken is perfect for watching the big game or taking a meal to the lake house, down to the coast, or stay in the restaurant and dine in in a great atmosphere. It's all made fresh to order right there on 119 in Alabaster, Champy's Chicken. This hour of the next round is presented by the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, now featuring seven days of giveaways with your chance to win a share of up to $125,000. The more you visit the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, the more chances you have to win. Hey, there's nothing worse than waking up to a plumbing problem. Don't get caught in a flooded house. Call the guys at Hemphill Services. Adam, Chad, and the team at Hemphill are the only ones I trust to fix it and fix it right the first time. Hemphill Services does it right and always at a fair price. For all of your plumbing, cooling, and heating needs, trust the name that Birmingham has trusted since 1954. That is Hemphill Services. Call now, 205 209-2090. That's 205-229-2090. Fire damage to your home or business is something you never want to consider. Ryan Brown here from the next round. But in the horrible event it happens, Dry Tech is here to help. They respond quickly and will reply to you within 20 minutes when you call 205-637-0143. They're working for you, the customer, not the insurance company. They've got five crews ready to go 24-7. Don't call the insurance company first. Call Dry Tech. Just remember this website mydrytech.com that is mydrytech.com take tnr on the go with a podcast built for your satisfaction miss hour one find it in podcast form miss hour two stream it now miss hour three download it for later miss hour four well just know it's never coming back listen to tnr wherever you find podcasts NASCAR is returning to the Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Get ready to level up your fandom with the Autograph app. Co-founded by the legendary Tom Brady himself, this app is your one-stop shop for everything college sports. Access to all the best sports content, exciting fan challenges, and exclusive rewards. Think, 
crazy discounts on tickets, limited edition merch, and much more. Just look at this. Autograph hooked up six lucky fans with tickets to the Arkansas-Alabama game for just $16 a ticket. That's what they call true fan pricing. Ready to join the party? Download the free Autograph app today and use the code TNR for exclusive access. All right, we are back on the next round from Birmingham and L.A., Dunaway out in L.A., courtesy of mybookie.ag. Show presented in part today by our friends at Coca-Cola. Dunaway, I know you've tried that Coca-Cola Spiced, the great uh, Coca-Cola classic taste with that raspberry spice. It just adds just a little bit there, doesn't it? It does. It absolutely does. And um, listen, I I think it's the drink for the next generation. If you want to just let your uh, kids give it a shot down at the lake or the beach this year by the pool, it is perfect for that. It just sort of brings out spring and summer all in one bottle. It is Coca-Cola Spice. Get it from your local retailer. All right. Uh, EG is in studio, and that I tells am. you it is time for uh, four downs. Are you worried about Dunaway? What, Dunaway? Why are you shaking Why your head? Are you shaking your head? Uh, well, well, first off, I, I, I swung by the, uh, the Alabama team hotel last night. Okay. And, Hold and the music the right first thing, Yes. The, the, the first thing, the first thing that happens when I walk in, I see one person who travels with Alabama, uh, and and she walks up to me and she said, you know, Taylor and Emily Grace were exactly right on the show yesterday. And you were mansplaining to them about this and that. And I wow. said, I was not. I was trying to explain what happened. I did not try to to get into Taylor's face that Alabama was still. It was a it was a mishap on something I send to Taylor every morning that nobody knows about except Taylor and me. I send her headlines to send out in a tweet. And then Emily Grace jumps in from the top rope trying to uh, elbow me on the Tampa Bay Rays. So I had to go back and defend my Tampa Bay Rays. I just thought I was caught in a whirlwind yesterday. And then after a long flight, I land in LA and I'm getting punched out out here that they were defending EG and Taylor out here. I was like, what is going on? What world do I live in? I'm Jimmy Alabama and you're, you're taking Georgia Southern and Auburn side here. It was, it was it just was mind blowing. I'm not surprised. Truthfully. <laughs> I'm honored. I actually did text her like you told me to. <laughs> yeah. No. No, she said get her to get her to text me because I've got to let her know I'm defending her. Well, I love it. I, I, love I it. did send a text and she responded. Um, he's so funny. I jokingly told him to have you text if you ever need someone to back you up. Felt your pain yesterday when you were frustrated and being micromanaged and mansplained. Ooh, micromanaged face. and sure. mansplained. So good. Yes, yes. yes. Mansplaining is when you oh, yeah. 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 so I kind of break it down to <laughs> Hey, you know, if, if Alabama wins, they move on to another great. round that, that, and Jim no can stay out there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The Elite Eight, they call it. Yeah. And it's Sweet 16. They don't all yeah. get cars. It's, okay. a, it's, it's just basketball. Did they, it's are they all turning 16? No, 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 no they're, they're, they're yeah. players. And, and Emily Grace mansplaining actually started in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is the city in California. Um, California is the state. I think in the we US. went there together. We did, we? yes. We uh, yeah. Is that close to Yosemite? <laughs> <laughs> You'll never live it down. What did I say the other day that was equally as bad? As Yosemite? As Yosemite. I was uh, out in the lobby. What was it? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, missed re- it. I remember it now. What uh, was it, Dunaway? I can't remember what it was, but you did it. I remember you did it. I was I remember like, oh, that. my God. What was it? I'll oh, my think God. Of it. That yeah. was funny, though. All right, it is time for Four yeah. Downs. EG in here to give us the Four Downs presented by Slice. Four Downs, four great locations of Slice, SliceBirmingham.com. A new fifth one coming very, very soon to Homewood right there on the Murderer's Row of our sponsors with Blakely's Bouquets and Odie's and uh, Slice and Bandwagon. I mean, we just got them all. The Taco Mama, they're all over the place down there. SliceBirmingham.com, SliceBirmingham.com. Four down starts with first down. Okay, more Big Ten teams in the final four in basketball or the upcoming football season. So in basketball, you've still got Purdue, Purdue, Illinois, Illinois, is that it? I think that's it. Is that it in the Big Ten? I think so. So essentially, mm. that's a tough one. I know because you have Ohio State. Yeah, I've got fe- Michigan. I feel pretty confident, Dunaway. I'm going to get Ohio State in my Final Four in football. Agreed. I don't know that I've got another Big Ten team. I would say I'm confident about that. Yeah, I think this is going to be a tie one-one at best. But I'm going to take football because I think Ohio State will at least be a Final Four. Um, I have a feeling that Tennessee, uh, don't they play Purdue? They do if they win. Yeah, they both win. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think Tennessee could keep uh, keep Purdue from going. So I'm gonna go one in football, none yeah, in basketball. I think I like that's that. the answer. I think Ohio State in football and none in basketball. Yeah. I think is where I would go. Purdue is playing much better right now, though, so than they have in previous tournaments, but. Sometimes this week off does weird things to teams. Like yeah. they play dominant basketball the way Gonzaga and Purdue have, and then they come back and they're just not the same team. So I'll go zero basketball, one football. Okay. Second down. Of all the Sweet 16 schools, top school you would choose to attend for four years, last school you would choose to attend for four years. And Dunaway, we are going to take Alabama off this list. So I know. Um, the, of, of the 16 teams that are of left, the I'm choosing teams. the one I would – Okay, you go first, Brown. Let me think about this. I think I have mine. I, San Diego is a great town. I don't know what that campus is like. Have you ever seen no, it? Dunaway, have seen. you ever been on the San Diego State campus? You know, I've never been to the city of San Diego. Okay, so that'd be a no. <laughs> but, it's, but it's supposed to be a great city, but that could be a crap campus. I have no idea. So not knowing that. I like the idea of Arizona because of the weather. I've never been on that campus. Jim, have you been in Tucson? Have you been on that campus? I, I, ironically, I've not been to Tempe. I've uh, yeah. been on the Arizona State campus, but I hear great things about Tucson. Even Barkley says great things about Tucson. Um, boy, Arizona's a good call. Uh, Arizona's a good call. Uh, I think I would take Arizona after a little tea. Explain Spokane to me. I like Spokane a little bit better, but I still, it was rainy every day she was there, and I just pictured it'd be too rainy. So I'd go four years at Arizona, and my. My last four years, I would not want to spend four years at Illinois. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, a lot of this is going to be weather related for me. Like, I don't want UConn's winter weather. I do not want Illinois' winter weather. I don't want Iowa State's winter weather. I don't want Marquette's winter weather. Uh, I, do, for land? I do not want Purdue or Gonzaga's winter weather rock star. That's why Arizona, San Diego. Yeah, looks Arizona, good. North Carolina. I've always yeah. thought it'd be a cool place to go to school. I think I think that's Duke. a pretty campus. I've never been North Carolina Duke or pretty campuses, yeah. but I think my my dead last is going to be any one of those northern ones. I'd probably say UConn. I think of all those, it probably gets the worst weather uh, in the Ooh. winter. Yeah. I'll, I'll change mine. I'll take Illinois off the table. I'll go back to UConn. Yeah, UConn. UConn my... for four years, no way. And yeah. I'll take Arizona. Clemson could be kind of nice. Though. Clemson's a cool campus. I've. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, I wouldn't hate Clemson. It wouldn't be my first choice. Done away with a hard no on Clemson. It's, an, it's Auburn with a lake. Auburn with a lake. Done away. What's not to like? Well, I do like Auburn better than Clemson. Okay. Uh, Third down. <laughs> Clemson adds a lake. Yes. <laughs> NFL kickoff returns for a touchdown this season with the new kickoff rule over under four and a half. So there were four last year, Dunaway, four kickoffs returned for a touchdown. So essentially what EG is asking us, do you think this new kickoff rule will give us, I'm going to man, mansplain this to you. Do you, think, <laughs> no. do, do you think, I'm just like, what, what part of that do you not think I understand? There were four last year, Dunaway. What do you think? I was like, wow, why is he explaining this? See how it feels. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's the... Uh, the, the trooper chase that's going on out here in Los Angeles above me. We got two helicopters hovering above me now. Uh, uh, I feel like somebody's on the run, like there's a car, a car chase going on. Um, I think it's going to be over. I think we're going to not want to give them the ball at the 30 or 35, whatever they settle on. I think we're going to try to kick it into that zone high and short at five or 10. And then I think without the running start, the blocking scheme, I think this is going to be one of those heavily over-adjusted things that bring in too many kick returns and will somehow tweak it to go back because it'll be too many kick returns. I'd say well over the four and a half. Is Lunsford back there, Rockstar? Uh, he is. Can I bring Lunsford into this conversation? Lunsford, you've watched a lot of the spring leagues. Did, were there an enormous amount of kick returns? Because it seems to me, Lunsford, with this system, it's harder to have kind of the deep. It's, it seems like if you just break one line, you're gone. Like there's not that secondary tackler back there. I'll be honest. I honestly don't remember, but um, I I feel like there are returns in general. There's not a lot of successful returns. Yeah. Successful as in it doesn't get much past where the touchback would be. Yeah. I'm going to go over. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say, okay. Dunaway, this is hard for them to adjust to. The coaches are having to learn new things. They've been doing it one way for 40 years. Uh, I know they're great coaches, but I'm going to say we've got over. I think it leads to more kickoff returns for a touchdown. And then you're right. It'll be interesting to see if the league's like, whoa, that's just too easy scoring. Or those are exciting plays, though. I mean, it's great for the fans. Yeah, well, but I think the way the rule is, is that it, you can't catch it in the end zone and run it out. If you catch it in the end zone, it's dead, almost like in high school. Oh. So I think what we'll get to is just they're going to just blast them into the end zone and uh, 
and just we're going to have no return. It'll be a just a ceremonial play in football, which is what it's almost like now. A lot of overs. Tom says he thought he heard 60% returns uh, in the spring leagues, and there's only 22% returns for the NFL. That's not for a touchdown. That's just actual return kicks, not touchbacks. 22% in the NFL, 60% in the spring leagues. But I don't know that you've got as good a kicker. Almost any NFL kicker can kick it through the end zone. The only reason they don't is if there's wind, weather-related, or if they are trying to directionally kick for some sort of reason. So yep. I, I think you'll get a ton of touchbacks is what I think you'll get. Fourth down. Mariah Carey is 55 today. Mariah Carey's 55. 55. Right. She wears it well. Yeah. Better. Queen B. Better. <laughs> that's her. Yep, yeah. That's her. Yep. Better seasonal song. Mariah's, Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You or Lee Greenwood's God Bless the USA. Oh. Oh, my. Oh, my. Better so you're talking about which is the, which is the worst torture song? You no, know, what's the best? Oh, better the best. seasonal song. Better seasonal. I know mine. All I Want for Christmas is You or Lee mm, Greenwood's no. God I'd Bless the USA. I'd have to go Mariah Carey. I, I, think, I think I'm going to. <laughs> I mean, I cannot believe. I mean, this is where Emily Grace shows us that she is uh, 100% American and uh, is from Georgia, that she loves Lee Greenwood so much. Is that, am I right? Am I, am I guessing your answer correctly? Totally. AG? I love the 4th of July. <laughs> Who doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. I, here's yeah, here's why. I, I, lo- I love America. I love America, but that song is awful. Uh, uh, here, here's the way I would say this. Here's the way I would answer this, E.G. When Christmas rolls around, I can listen to that Mariah Carey yeah. song once or twice before it gets old. When the Fourth of July rolls around, I try to actively avoid, avoid the Lee song. Greenwood song. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. So. It's not in the Fourth of July playlist on for me personally. No, um, but I do enjoy the summertime vibe. My favorite thing, Dunaway and Rockstar, about the Fourth of July playlist, like when you go to the uh, fireworks show over Vulcan, oh, fireworks. Two, yep. No, no, the two songs they include. They, uh, Lee Greenwood's gonna be there every time. Um, the. Uh, uh, Springsteen song. Why can I not say the title? Oh, uh, Born, Born in the USA. USA. Born in the USA, which is not a patriot. I mean, it's a in a it's, sense yeah. a patriotic song, but it's a protest yeah. song. Yeah. And then the yeah. other one about the, about the Vietnam War, right? Yeah, about, about the Vietnam, Vietnam War. Yeah. And then the other one is Independence Day by Martina McBride, which is about an abused yeah. spouse burning yeah. her house <laughs> down with a husband in it. Yeah. I mean, that's the yeah. songs you're picking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's like we're. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's like when we play Mr. Brightside from the Killers at stadiums and everybody's dancing around singing about what is really just a creepy situation. Smoking <laughs> <laughs> a cigarette, man. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the Independence Day is the one that bugs me more than God Bless the USA or uh, Born in the USA because it's really it's, not about no, Independence no, Day. No, no, it is not. So it yeah. burns her God, house down. God bless, God bless America and even this land is your land. In my country, tis of the uh, better songs than uh, anything. Lee Toby Wood. Keith on the Fourth of July okay. is an absolute oh, yeah. mess for yeah. me. All right, well, I yeah. am I am going to go. I am going to go with the Mariah Carey song. I can stomach it once okay. or twice at Christmas. All right, that fourth is fourth down is done. That is four <laughs> downs. Sorry, did we go too low for you, Rockstar? That no, is no. four downs presented by Slice SliceBirmingham.com. Uh, we're still, we're, we're, we're stop that <laughs> way. Still... Even in LA, I can't I can't shake you. And your timing tactics. Yeah, don't you have a set design change in a minute? <laughs> <laughs> well, they said they said your your original spot was very Eastern Bloc, is what they were saying. You, it does look better behind it you does. now. This is far you more the radio program. <laughs> <laughs> this is much better here. Uh, this is a little more tropical. Yeah. I, was, I was in the Olympic Village earlier. Now now I've moved over here. To and a where the hell is your waiter? <laughs> it's been an hour. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, Dunaway, tell them about Way to Wellness as we head to the top of the hour here. Uh, your journey to healthy living is our friends at Way to Wellness. You can uh, keep your cholesterol in check, your blood pressure in check. My wife's worried about my blood pressure because Brown made me pack one bag and I left my blood pressure medication at home. I said, don't worry, baby, I'm on Way to Wellness. I'll be fine on this trip to Los Angeles. Uh, they can help you with weight loss as well. Jump it all right now. The website is a plan for me.com a plan for me.com way to wellness your journey to healthy living no contracts no sign up fees and your first consultation is absolutely free go see what leslie and her board certified team can do for you like we all did it's way to wellness a plan for me.com a plan for me.com back from la and birmingham when we come back on your home for basketball in the sweet 16 the next round follow rockstar on twitter at rockstar bhm 
Twin Peaks is the best in the game. Here, you're in the red zone for every college rivalry and divisional matchup all season long. I mean, where else are the scenic views as good as your view of the game? Only at Twin Peaks, the number one sports bar. Fire damage to your home or business is something you never want to consider. Ryan Brown here from the next round. But in the horrible event it happens, Dry Tech is here to help. They respond quickly and will reply to you within 20 minutes when you call 205-637-0143. They're working for you, the customer, not the insurance company. They've got five crews ready to go 24-7. Don't call the insurance company first. Call Dry Tech. Just remember this website, mydrytech.com. That is mydrytech.com. Things fall apart. There's even a book about it. But that doesn't mean you have to break the bank to fix them. Ryan Brown here for the next round. Our friends at Mortgage Right have a new renovation option that will make repairs and other home improvements easy. If you've recently purchased a home and find yourself short on cash or you're looking to buy a fixer-upper, Mortgage Right's renovation loan program can help you spruce up your space. Repairs can be made to your roof, plumbing, flooring, and more with the help of top-notch mortgage professionals. So get your fix by visiting mortgageright.com TNR and MLS 2239 Equal Housing Lender. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about one of our favorite places for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That is Hamburger Heaven since 1982. Hamburger Heaven has been serving Birmingham's best hamburgers, cheeseburgers, french fries, hand-spun milkshakes, and sandwiches made fresh to order. All of their ingredients are fresh and prepared daily. This includes their beef, always fresh, never frozen, hand patted each and every day. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, visit any of the four locations, Highway 280, Irondale, Gardendale, and Homewood. Tournament time is almost here, but any time is a great time to jump on with MyBookie.ag. When you sign up at MyBookie.ag, use code NEXTROUND for a special sign-on bonus. You can use that bonus right away. Win once with it. It is yours and yours forever. Not like some of the sites that make you win 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times before you keep the bonus. You win once at MyBookie.ag. It is yours forever. Basketball tournaments, NBA, the start of Major League Baseball, NASCAR, and golf. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. MyBookie.ag. Code NEXTROUND. Visit nextroundlive.com today. It's free, unless you haven't paid your internet bill. So go ahead and pay that, and then it's free. Heck, you can pull out your phone and go to nextroundlive.com right now, where you'll find all the free content that you can stomach, unless you haven't paid your phone bill. Then you need to pay that, and then you can enjoy all the free content. Nextroundlive.com is so rewarding that it should be behind a paywall, like Lance's Lock. So in summary, play Lance's Lock. Then you'll have enough money to pay your bills and go to nextroundlive.com where you're always at your happiest for free. NASCAR is returning to Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. Final hour of the show underway from Birmingham and L.A. It is the Champions Hour. Sterling and the gang there at Champions just off 119 in Alabaster. Just flung open the doors and everybody rushed in to get a great lunch. Go by there and enjoy those great chicken fingers, the po' boys, the Mississippi Delta recipe tamales, the great sides. Get a margarita for Megan there. Uh, enjoy games throughout the weekend. There are Champions World Famous Fried Chicken, ChampiesChicken.com. That is ChampiesChicken.com. Dunaway is in L.A., courtesy of MyBookie.ag. Code next round when you sign on there at MyBookie.ag. He has done the show outdoors. It started with him shivering in the cold. Now people are, now people are worried about Dunaway's uh, sunburn. Uh, Rusty, I know Jim packed a hat. He needs to put it on. Uh, Charles, his head is going to be way to hellness. Uh, <laughs> J Mo says it reminds me of McAfee baking on the field at Bryant Denny last summer. Uh, so there you go. Am I starting to get red? Well, I mean, I I want to remind people it is only nine a.m. out there. I don't think you can get sunburned at nine a.m. Yeah, it is accepted. a morning sun here in Los Angeles. You don't think so, Rockstar? Right no, I bet I could definitely. Well, yeah, but you are fair skinned Dunaway's. Dunaway's got some native Alabamian in him, so he's he's got that uh, he's got that skin that that tans before it burns. 
oh, we got to do that. We haven't done that yet. We got to do that me and 23 thing. That's right. Just see how much you have in you. Uh, see, I mean, it's not a him. I think you're safe for now. I don't. I don't know. I I think you're okay. Yeah. Like I think I think a little sunlight is good for you. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Emily Grace and Taylor would tell you, since uh, apparently they're the smartest people on our staff. I think they would tell you that um, that you need some sunshine. So I think the actual sun is good for me. Yeah. Okay. So uh, those of you in the chat room worried about Dunaway's uh, skin, you don't have to worry about that. Um, uh, we are going to, at the end of this segment, make a little bit of a, uh, announcement about something we got coming up on the show next week that we are excited about. So stick around Whoa. before we go to break. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Stick around before we go to break. Do I know it? Do I yes, know what it do. is? You absolutely do. I would not, I would not, I would not shock you with this one. Everybody knows, but, uh, we're going to announce it to the audience at the end of this segment. So everybody just hang on at the end of this segment. We're, uh, we're going to make that announcement. Dunaway is going to head over to uh, talk to the players and the coaches at Crypto.com Arena coming up a little bit later on today. Um, This team, from what Taylor told us up in Spokane and from what her video showed, it was a very loose team up there, Dunaway. Um, Loose is good. I will be interested to see. I mean, you compare them in North Carolina. I I, I don't – look, this doesn't necessarily equate into a win, but – I will be interested to see which team feels like they might be a little bit looser and enjoying the moment more. Well, I think it's fair to say, Brown, that Tennessee being the number one overall seed uh, in this part of the region, number one seed, not number one overall, uh, the fact that they have North Carolina on their uniform, um, the fact that they missed the NCAA tournament last year and they bounced back with a proven All-American in Baycott and being the one seed again, I think the pressure is on them, yep, right? So Alabama agree. gets gets to come in loosey goosey as the underdog. Uh, maybe the first time this year that Alabama gets to play without any pressure on them, uh, because if you're just the general population of fans in America, you're going to look at North Carolina and Alabama in the bracket, and you're going to say uh, North Carolina moved them out, and that may end up being how, how it is. But you see the betting line on how at mybookie.ag how close the experts think this game will end up being. And I think if Alabama's in the game late, like they were against Purdue and Creighton and some of those games that uh, they lost pre-conference, then um, if they're just in it late, then the pressure kicks up on the number one seed in this region. And um, as we've all seen uh, at Crypto.com Arena, uh, the non-North Carolina fans, the few Alabama fans, and all the Clemson and Arizona fans will be cheering for Alabama at that point because they're like, oh, we'd rather play Alabama if we win <laughs> than, than play North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina, a four-and-a-half-point favorite at mybookie.ag, so that has ticked up just a little bit. It's been hanging around four, but it has ticked up to four-and-a-half right now. We'll talk more uh, about that tomorrow and just kind of see where it shakes out. But the thing about it, you mentioned the pressure that is on North Carolina. I, I don't think there's ever a North Carolina basketball season that ends in just a Sweet 16 run where the fans are like, hey, that was a good season right there, right? I mean, you're North Carolina basketball. When you get in the tournament, you expect to be an Elite Eight Final Four team. When you're a one seed in the tournament, you expect to be a Final Four team. I don't think a single North Carolina fan started this tournament thinking, I'll be okay with Sweet 16 Elite Eight. You expect to be playing to lift that trophy in Phoenix. Yeah, in fact, if you fill out your bracket every year, you should put the one seed all the way out. The people who win brackets all the time say, you should always put your one seed out to at least the Sweet 16 before you ever start thinking about any any of the others. Um, Because the the advantage advantage you get, it doesn't always happen, but more more times than not, they're in the Sweet 16. So Sweet 16 is a minimum for a one seed. And that's why last year was so disappointing for Alabama. A lot of years in Alabama basketball, Sweet 16 is a good season. Last year, it was not a good season because Alabama – didn't go past the Sweet 16 as the number one overall seed. A big disappointment. This year, being in the Sweet 16, they've accomplished something. So it's free money now. House money is the old saying for Alabama. It's house money now. They can go shoot their shot tomorrow night, see if they can make it to the Elite Eight for the second time in program history. If not, good season. Not a great season because Alabama's moved past Sweet 16 being great, but a good season, and you load up with a great recruiting class and do it again. But a lot of pressure on North Carolina. They don't hang banners in Chapel Hill for Sweet 16. They do not, yeah. I I think it's the pressure squarely on North Carolina. And it was on Alabama last year. Alabama was the overall number one seed. Yep. 
I and listen, there were there were a lot of storylines, as we all know, uh, going on around that team outside storylines from off the court that probably affected some of this. Uh, you were around that team in Birmingham. You were around that team. You and I both in Louisville and Birmingham. It just didn't. It felt a little tight, honestly. I mean, I know that's easy to say in hindsight because they got bounced in the round of sixteen. Um, it just it, it had a weird feel around that team from all that was going on off the court, all those external factors. You know, that's why you know I I always go back at different circumstances now, absolutely different circumstances. Uh, with what was going on in Tuscaloosa and what went on with Auburn in 2010. But that's why I give Gene Chizik so much credit for that national championship back in 2010. Because if you didn't live through it, uh, you woke up every day as a fan or a sportscaster to something new in the Cam Newton saga, some kind of question about his eligibility or something else for that entire season. And they were able to navigate behind greatness of Cam Newton to be national champions in college football. Now, in a totally different circumstance last year, but with the same kind of media scrutiny, every time Alabama took the basketball court, um, there was, you know, pieces being written, stories being told on Sports Center, a uh, new test, you know, new piece of information come out, this debate going on on pardon the interruption. It was something almost every day and not a good way about Alabama basketball. And they were having to deal with that. You're right. There was not one enjoyable moment about that great run last year because of the off the court situation you just when it was over with you you just went well that's over with yeah and brandon miller has moved on to the nba but during when it was going on every day you almost felt guilty at times enjoying just the basketball part of it yeah it, it was a weird vibe it was a weird vibe around that team you know in birmingham nate oates was being asked about you know, were there undercover bodyguards that Alabama had hired to protect Brandon Miller? Was the was there a threat on his life? I mean, it was just a weird vibe, yep. man. Just a weird vibe around that team. And um, I, I, I don't sense that saying. I, j- j- probably a looser situation. And again, you're the four, they're the one. Last year, Alabama was the one. San Diego State was the five. Uh, you were the one that was carrying all the pressure. And San Diego State was playing with house money. And they made it all the way to the national championship game. So I think those roles are kind of reversed. Not for the same reasons. But those roles are kind of reversed this year for Alabama and North Carolina. Yeah. And, and this is where, I mean, really, this is where Nate Oates' scheduling comes into effect, right? North Carolina is on the other sideline. Oh, Alabama's played, you know, Purdue and Creighton and, and Arizona this year. So they they played – uh, and, and all these guys who have been here a couple of years, they've played the the, the UConns. Uh, if you've been around the program for a while, you're used to seeing Alabama going up against these major programs before the conference turn, uh, conference regular season starts. So this is just another out-of-conference game for Alabama. They won't be intimidated by the name on the jersey. At least you hope they're not because they shouldn't be. And then they take their shot. So, I mean, there's a, a thousand things that can go wrong for Alabama. They don't win the game. And it starts with foul trouble and Baycock having his way on the inside because Alabama is weak in there. And if the threes aren't falling, it could be a long night. You look at what happened at Rupp Arena. You look at happen, what happened on the road at Neville. You look at what happened in Knoxville. I mean, there's a, a getting blown out scenario with this team. But there's also so some some I've been in against really great Sweet 16 teams, either beating them at home are playing with them on the road to where I've got a chance to win it in the under 10 second half that they've got in their in their cartridge and they've got on their resume that I think gives them a fighting chance tomorrow night. Uh, by the way, breaking news in basketball, we'll tell you after Dunaway tells us about NASCAR coming back to the Talladega Super Speedway, Geico 500 weekend, talladegasuperspeedway.com, 877-GO-TO-DEGA. It's going to be a fun weekend, Dunaway. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be fun, Brownie. And we're talking about uh, the chance also – on Saturday night to see Walker Hayes in concert, country music star Walker Hayes. And uh, you can keep it fancy like uh, any NASCAR wow. fan loves to do at Talladega by getting tickets uh, to the infield, or you can do any of their great camping. But I say upgrade to the garage experience presented by Cool Ray. Uh, do that one time if you're a NASCAR fan, just so you can feel the action inside the garage area. you got the best drivers in the world, and you are able to walk up, to a fence that hits you about mid-thigh or about the waist, depending on your height, and you're that close to the cars being worked on, the drivers, the crew chiefs. Uh, It's unbelievable just to watch them during practice and then preparing 
for a race that close. You're in the garage in that garage experience. You can get details on how you can upgrade for that garage experience or anything else at Talladega by going to talladegasuperspeedway.com, talladegasuperspeedway.com, or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. The races are April 19th through the 21st, camping all week long. Just a great experience. That Geico 500 ticket on Sunday gets you into the Walker Hayes concert on Saturday night. Two races Saturday, one Sunday, TalladegaSuperspeedway.com. Louisville has their basketball coach. Dunaway with us uh, from out in L.A., courtesy of Ooh. MyBookie.ag, code next round. MyBookie.ag. It's got nothing to do with L.A. I was just pointing out that you were there. MyBookie.ag. Yeah. Who did you think when I said that? Did you think it had something to do with L.A.? No, 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 no. I okay. thought um, I thought Shaka Smart was going to be in the mix, but he's still playing, so it wouldn't be Shaka Smart. According to Jeff Goodman, Pete Thamel, Jeff Borzello, a lot of guys uh, there that cover college basketball, it is just a matter of time before Pat Kelsey, the Charleston head coach who Alabama just saw, um, will be named as the head coach at Louisville. If you have not followed him, he was the Winthrop head coach for quite a bit. Um, He had 186 wins at Winthrop. He went to the NCAA tournament twice he was in it again when it got canceled or he was going to be in it again when it got canceled um he has twice gone to the ncaa tournament at charleston so four ncaa tournaments would have been five if not for covid in his coaching career two of the three years he's been at charleston pat kelsey dunaway former xavier coach and player now the head coach at louisville so that's all the really big jobs now Michigan, Louisville, Kentucky did not come open. Ohio State, they're all filled. I think Oklahoma State's like the only, you know, high major job that's open right now, if I'm not mistaken. So so you're telling me I'm sitting here and in this Louisville job that maybe I've over put on too high of a pedestal, uh, that I was thinking that Shaka Smart could leave Marquette for, that Scott Drew could look at maybe leaving Baylor for, that Mick Cronin could leave UCLA for, that you know, NATO is possibly could be lured away from Alabama for, that they've gone with a guy who won at Winford, Winthrop and won at Charleston. Not saying he can't win because NATO's won at Buffalo, and that's in high school in Buffalo. So obviously you got to win somewhere. Kalen DeBoer won at you know, different levels all his way to being Alabama's football coach. I'm not saying he can't win, but I thought this would draw – some bigger names in the interest that they, they would be shopping in a different area. Well, I mean, if you just look back at the coaches that they have hired over the years, I'm going to pull up all their, all their coaches here um, that they have hired over the years. And I, this doesn't really seem to fit. And, and you do wonder what has happened um, to, to Louisville basketball. Is it not what it used to be done away? Do you think it's, I mean, what do you think it is? You think it's NIL? They seem like they would have some NIL support. Is it the ACC is just not where it used to be? I mean, what what, what do you think has happened to a Louisville basketball? It's a proud program, man. Um, it is. I, um, you know, I think, I mean, they just won a national championship a few years ago. Remember the Rick Pitino tattoo? I don't I know do. if the NCAA recognizes it, but I remember he I saw still, the tattoo. He still got the tat, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I uh, – I, I think this program's fine. They just ran into, a, you know, back when there were rules, they ran into some policing. They've been in prison, and, and now they need to come out of prison and uh, and uh, start, start you know, pretending they're blue blood again. This may work out. He may be a great coach, uh, and it may work out. This may be the perfect route to go, get well, a guy to come do the hard work and uh, build them back, but we'll see. I mean, their last coaches have been Denny Crum, who was the legendary coach of that program. Then they hire Rick Patino, which is an incredible hire. You go from Denny Crum to Rick Patino, And after Patino got fired, you go to Chris Mack. And Chris Mack, that was a hot name. I mean, they were hiring one of the top coaches in America when they hired Xavier's Chris Mack. It did not work out, obviously. And then they tried to uh, – they, they, they panicked. I, I don't know if they panicked. I don't know why, but they tried to. Let's go back to what's comfortable. Let's go back to a Louisville guy. And that's when they went with Kenny Payne, and that's been a disaster. So Pat Kelsey is a little bit a little bit of a different hire than what they've had at Louisville recently. But, you know, Richard Patino's name was being mentioned was. for a little bit, and I thought that, I thought that would have been uncomfortable because yeah. it was, you know, Rick's job, and now it's going to be Richard and everything that went on there. Um, but obviously, if, if Dad wasn't still coaching, it'd be good to have him as sort of your uh, secretary of state or something. Uh, but now you're going Chris Mack wasn't that successful there. And now you're going to a guy who I think was an assistant of Chris he Mack. Was. He was. Yeah, when he was. left. Yep. And, yeah. So now you're st- sort of staying in the Chris Mack family, and 
Yeah, I don't know. Weird don't hire. Know. Weird we'll hire. See. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's it's kind of a. I think they probably got turned down a few times before they ended up at Pat Kelsey. I don't think Pat Kelsey was the guy they set out and said that's the guy we're going to go hire. Um, but you know that doesn't mean he's the second and third choices have been successful at different places. All right, let's make a quick show announcement before Dunaway dives off for a little bit uh, for trash, and he'll come back with us at the end of the show. Dunaway, we're excited that next Tuesday we did this in Tuscaloosa. We've been waiting to finalize Coach Freeze's schedule and our date with Auburn, and it is coming up Tuesday. Tuesday, April 2nd, our show will be live uh, at the Auburn Football Complex. We'll be there all, all day long from 9 to noon. Uh, entire show there from the Auburn Football Complex. Coach Freeze is going to join us. John Cohen, uh, the athletics director, is going to join us. Peyton Thorne, Auburn's quarterback, will join us. Uh, we're going to have a lot of guests there. We're going to talk uh, a lot of Auburn football and maybe a few other Auburn things with uh, John Cohen. Uh, so we're going to have a fun trip down there. We did it in Tuscaloosa. We've just been waiting uh, to finalize Coach Freeze's schedule uh, so we can make sure he's available during our show to announce our Auburn date. We were able to do that. And April 2nd, coming up Tuesday, that is when we will be live at the Auburn Football Complex. And uh, Dunaway, we had a great time there in Tuscaloosa, and I anticipate having a good time at Auburn. We're excited about this. Yeah, 100%. And I'd had the chance to tour the Alabama facilities before, but I haven't gone on the full tour of the Auburn facility before. So I look forward to walking behind the scenes down at Auburn and seeing all the stuff that they've built since I first started covering the program under Pat Dye back in the day. So um, to, to talk with Hugh Freeze on camera and off camera, uh, to get to know a little bit about Peyton Thorne, you know, to sit down with him an extended period of time, um i I'm, I'm excited about this and so it's happening tuesday and our entire show will be down there and of course uh, uh taylor will be our our tour guide right that's right she'll she'll show us she'll show us where they eat lunch and and uh, all the fun stuff in auburn i can't wait it should yep. be a blast yep so the whole crew will be yeah. down there uh coming up tuesday that will be a fun time so we look forward to that with our friends at auburn all right dunaway we're gonna let you uh get in the shade you know let that tan in just a little bit so it's not gonna be sunburned we're gonna do trash eg and taylor are gonna jump in here for trash and we'll see you in just a little bit dunaway out in la courtesy of mybookie.ag for the sweet 16 mybookie.ag code next round get that sign on bonus use it win once with it it is yours and yours forever mybookie.ag code next round trash is next follow scott forrester on twitter at scott forrester tv Ready to swap from your current auto or RV loan provider and drop your interest rate? Now is your chance. With Legacy Credit Union's annual swap and drop promotion, you can swap your current loan and save with Legacy in minutes. Whether you're a member or a potential member, Legacy Credit Union is here to help you drive into savings. Go online to swapanddrop.com or visit one of their nine locations to take advantage of this incredible offer. Limited time offer terms and conditions may apply. See Credit Union for details. Federally insured by the NCUA. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about one of our favorite places for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That is Hamburger Heaven since 1982. Hamburger Heaven has been serving Birmingham's best hamburgers, cheeseburgers, french fries, hand-spun milkshakes, and sandwiches made fresh to order. All of their ingredients are fresh and prepared daily. This includes their beef, always fresh, never frozen, hand patted each and every day. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, visit any of the four locations, Highway 280, Irondale, Gardendale, and Homewood. Storm season is here. Make sure you have a plan of action in place right now. Greg from Pell City and Storm Restoration Roofing should be your first call when storms hit. Insurance companies love working with Storm Restoration Roofing because of Greg Nelson's name and reputation in the industry. When storms hit, call Greg Nelson. He's local. 205-542-3531. He's the home of the free no-cost roof inspection. Greg from Pell City on Facebook. 205-542-3531. It's Storm Restoration Roofing. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Man, that's a bold question. But it's got that irresistible taste to back it up. One thing's for sure, when you've got an irresistible tasty match like Zero Sugar and Zero Calories, something sensational is bound to happen. It's too bad you can't taste it with your ears because this Coke Zero Sugar tastes amazing. Truthfully, it's hard to put into words, and that's my job. You'll have to take a taste for yourself. Coke Zero Sugar. Best Coke ever? Get ready to level up your fandom with the Autograph app. Co-founded by the legendary Tom Brady himself, this app is your one-stop shop for everything college sports. Access to all the best sports content, exciting fan challenges, and exclusive rewards. Think crazy discounts on tickets, limited edition merch, and much more. Just look at this. 
autograph hooked up six lucky fans with tickets to the Arkansas Alabama game for just sixteen dollars a ticket. That's what they call true fan pricing. Ready to join the party? Download the free autograph app today and use the code TNR for exclusive access. Spring weather is here, and our friends at Hempel Services are offering a $69 HVAC tune up plus 10% off any service call when you mention the next round. Call Adam, Chad, and the guys at Hempel Services. Make sure your HVAC unit is ready to keep up with the changing weather. Hempel Services, locally owned and operated independent train dealer. The team can service all makes and models. For all of your plumbing, heating, and cooling needs, call Hempel Services. It's hard to stop a train. 205 229 2090 or HempelServices.com. That's 205 229 2090. HempillServices.com. All right, next round rolls on. We're about to do a little trash, little tea running in here. She and EG are going to present trash today. Rockstar, going to jump in as well. Hey, a reminder before we do that, though, Lance has been growing his hair back thanks to Dr. B. Dr. Beckenstein, good friend of ours, does a tremendous job. Men and women, we get asked that a lot. If if I'm a lady and I'm losing my hair and I want to reverse that, can Dr. B help me? Absolutely he can. You need to go see him. Lance did it, and uh, it has changed his head of hair. And the great thing about it is it's not like a one-size-fits-all deal. It's not just like, here's my program, go do my program. It is uh, tailored just for you and selected just for you. You get to give the input on the one uh, Dr. B tells you the things he thinks will work best, and you're like, I'm most comfortable with this one. That's the one you do. You do the in uh, in office. They follow up on a uh, virtual visit to uh, go through your options with you. Lance picked one that has worked tremendously well for him. He's seen great results. You can, too. T3hair.net. That is T3hair.net. Dr. Michael Beckenstein, Dr. B, we call him. He can help you grow that hair back. T3hair.net for Dr. B. Uh, J.A. asked, did LT go somewhere fun this week? Just did a beach trip with the family. we got a lot of people out. Uh, Scott is out. Yeah. Uh, LT is out. We've just had some vacation here. Spring break with the kids. It's always fun. Kelsey's out. Kelsey's out. Spring break with the kids. Did you guys, like, college spring break, did y'all do the big spring break trips in college? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. LT. Yes. You did? Well, actually, no. I guess I didn't really have one because my freshman year was COVID. Oh, no. Yeah. You okay. Got sophomore that. year, I went to LA. That was our big Well, that's one. fine. Yeah. And that then fun. Thought it was out there. Third. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that place. I can't believe that it's LA and there's Sweet 16 teams playing. It's so I cool. like LA too. <laughs> now, listen, LA is an interesting town. Um, but I, I've, I've been out there. I've been out there twice in the last year and I enjoy my time in LA. Have you ever been a little tea? I've been once in high school. Yeah. And we were doing you know, a little West Coast, like we traveled around, so we didn't yeah. stay in LA. So I didn't spend a ton of time there. We spent a few days there though. I liked it. It's a wild place, man. It's, yeah. a, it's a different world out there, but I've, I've enjoyed it. I really like the San Fernando Valley area, like Burbank and, yes. and those, those towns. I think that's yeah. really cool. I enjoyed LA a lot. I'd go yeah. back for sure. But then that was really the only big one we did. Cause then my junior year, I was in the Dominican Republic. We've talked about that. I think we we're both down there at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've seen this the videos. Is, this was EG was on a mission trip. <laughs> I was not. Well, you were on a mission. I was on a mission. Uh, EG, was, EG was helping. Helping, yeah. was helping the water filters. Yeah, so. yeah. um, Laura says, my college daughter just got back from Miami. So much for broke college student. Um, she didn't meet LL Cool J. Oh, wow. Have what you done Miami? <laughs> it's that commercial. Yes, it is that commercial. Miami. You don't have to count down the selfies. This is him. I think I have a video of my nephew playing the piano. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh, Jay's going down to the coast for mullet toss in a few weeks. We may be down there. There's a couple things in the work there with our friends at the Floribama. Um, boy, Daniel says I'd rather get pepper sprayed than go to L.A., but oh. I lived in Northern California. Maybe I'm biased. Wow. Oh, pepper spray sounds wow, awful. That does sound really <laughs> awful. <laughs> it does. All right. Uh, do we have a lot of yeah, trash stories today? Yeah, we got some good stuff, uh, I think. We got some good stuff. Good job out of you, Rockstar. Yeah. Trash, always presented by Mortgage, right? Rockstar, hit it, please. Well, shit. What are y'all doing? <laughs> This is awful. It's still March. How many days in March? LT's Trash is presented by Mortgage Right. Mortgages done the right way. All right. Uh, trash presented by Mortgage Right. Veteran owned, veteran operated. They got great programs for all veterans. But anyone that is looking to buy or refinance a home, your first stop needs to be mortgageright.com slash TNR. That is mortgageright.com. Dot com slash TNR. Dunaway in LA, LT off. So 
Little T and EG, kind enough to join us yeah, for Trash today. Absolutely. We'll start with the first one. Let me ask you guys this. If you had over $700,000, what would you spend it on? Ooh, this is hard. Um, well, college tuition, not for me, but for my daughter. Uh, but primarily, like, the non-sensible purchases would be golf-related. Okay. Probably, you know, memberships at courses and things like that. I think just I would just go on some trips. I would go on okay. vacations. Right. So this person a lot spent, of vacations, <laughs> and that is a lot of vacations, <laughs> over $700,000 on the Titanic door that saved Kate Winslet's life. Okay, yeah, now they know that. that's not really from the Titanic, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is a, just a movie prop. Yeah, Rockstar, right. that door did not appear the on the movie t- is literally called Titanic. Yeah, it's not a documentary. Uh, that is uh, That is just a movie prop. So they have spent... Almost a million dollars on a movie prop. Yes, and it beat out iconic props like Indiana Jones' bullwhip from Temple of Doom and Jack Nicholson's axe from The Shining. While commonly referred to as the door, the auction <laughs> notes the ornate structure was in reality part of the door frame just above the ship's first-class lounge entrance. In addition, Winslet's chiffon dress that she wore during the film's final act sold for $125,000. Like, what do you do with that? You That's do it and then understand. it just gets dusty. It sits in your attic and gets dusty. Yeah, I mean, you put it in a... These people, I'm sure, have a large house if they're spending seven hundred grand well, on remember, a door. Didn't uh, Leo have, like, a dinosaur skull? Did he like really? He paid a lot of money for, like, a dinosaur skull. So, I, I mean, I think it's a talk piece. Like, you know, this door is the door that Kate Winslet was on in uh, yeah, Titanic. I and just, then people stand and look at it for, like, two minutes, and they're like, well, it is a door. Well, listen yeah, to I these don't... other numbers. So, Harrison Ford's whip from Temple of Doom, $525,000. Are you kidding me? Like, I mean, I could have any bull whip. Okay, okay, let me finish the sentence. Any bullwhip <laughs> in the basement of my house yeah. and tell them it was Harrison Ford's bullwhip and you wouldn't know the difference. Uh, yeah. It's not that I do, by the way. Bill Murray's Red Rose Bowling Ball from Kingpin, $350,000. That's Still actually cracking. That's a pretty cool bowling ball, though, right? Hair, uh, best hair in the game. Yeah, uh, did he have a comb over by chance? No, no, no. Go deep, Jimmy. Deeper. <laughs> Nicholson's axe from The Shining, $125,000. Well, that's a scary photo, man. Ooh, Just that photo like made that. me shiver when you. When you showed it earlier, Rocky. How much was the axe? That was $125,000. It's an expensive axe. You can get a Home Depot. Depot. I know. know. Nobody knows the difference. No one knows the difference. And lastly, the sneaky shaving cream can Wayne Knight uses to smuggle dinosaur embryos in Jurassic Parks. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars it's a barbasol can just go run it through the mud I also just... i think people think dinosaur dna is in there uh, they think that stupid yeah. it's all so stupid the it money stupid. in the world can't buy taste is my opinion on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's... now a- am golfer says this is an investment piece because nick says i could i'd turn it into a coffee table um am golfer says it's an investment piece i mean it could go up in value i, I guess. guess you could resell it but... after the person passes away i feel like Maybe if it's their last movie or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know yeah. anything about this stuff, but I guess they just want it because those people touched it. It was an I, iconic film. It's made over a billion dollars worldwide. So, But I, I do think, too, Rockstar, it's part of the fascination people have with the Titanic. I've never understood that fascination. Like, I don't really care. Like, I mean, those 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 old boys drowned in that one homemade submarine trying to find the thing, didn't <gasps> they? Oh, I forgot yeah. about that. And they imploded. <laughs> oh, they it did. Yeah. Imploded, like well, I think I think, I think Frey's homemade submarine was yes, probably that, key in that well, the next box control. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just don't really, I, I don't really care enough about the Titanic to no. get a homemade submarine. I mean, no. I know the ship sank, right? We all accept well, that. And well, I feel like nowadays you can, because of YouTube, like I can see the wreckage of the Titanic on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, it's true, yeah. Like, I you can also to... watch a football game right, no, on I, YouTube. Yeah. Wait a minute, you did the, well... As I a mean, joke, it's like conspiracy theories. Uh, well, the conspiracy theorists Matt. say that that they had put, like, a lot of the banking magnates on there, and it was a setup. No, the, the other thing was it was an insurance scam. Yeah, yeah. I did hear that one. So. But it, but everybody agrees it sank. It's yeah. just, was it a setup? Or, and there's you know, a sister, uh, sister ship, ship, the Olympia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The exact same ship called the Olympia. And that, it had damage, and it was mm-hmm. in a shipyard. Yeah. And the well, they what are they switched. saying about that? They oh, got they got switched. switched. They switched. So it wasn't really the Titanic? It was the Olympia? It was a sister ship, and they sank it for the insurance. Yeah. I Wait, mean, what? you know, whatever. <laughs> I think James Cameron has something to do with it, because he's made a lot of money. He has made a lot of money off of it, there's no doubt. <laughs> okay, this next one is one of my favorites. Utah man arrested, accused of flashing red and blue lights to get through traffic. Have you all seen The Office? I've seen The okay. Office. Um, yeah. When Dwight puts his little, yeah. like, thing on yeah. top of his car, that just yeah. made me think of this. So a man was arrested over the weekend after police say he tried to get through freeway traffic by installing red and blue flashing lights in his work truck. 
The 47 year old man was booked into Iron County Jail. That's a cool name. Iron County, Iron County, County Jail. Does not sound like where you want to go to jail. <laughs> no. For investigation of several misdemeanor offenses, including impersonation of an officer, drug possession, and DUI. About 12.25 p.m. Sunday, multiple drivers called 911 saying the truck had red and blue flashing lights and they were getting other vehicles to move out of their way, according to a police booking. Even though the pickup had emergency lights in the grill, other drivers were suspicious because the truck had a construction company logo on the side. <laughs> I might give it away. <laughs> that says it's Valdez Construction, but they got Danny's police lights on there. Yeah. I contacted the driver and told him why we were there, and he admitted to turning on his red and blue lights. A trooper wrote in the arrest report, Troopers also reported finding a small bag containing a white powdery substance, with, hmm. which the driver allegedly claimed was amphetamine, and he takes it to stay awake while driving. Well, I got to have my lights on. I don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. Uh, you do this before you moved here. Taylor, I don't know if you would remember it, but we had an old boy that was a uh, evangelist that got arrested for yeah. this. Pulling people over. Wow. Pulling people over. This guy didn't pull people. He's used for the full, I just want to get through traffic. Yeah, he. Yeah, but our guy was pulling yeah, people over, pulling right? People yeah. Over. Oh, yeah, he had scary. like a big, I cannot remember his name. Yeah, there's, there's fires in Africa right yeah. now. There's more important things about yeah, it. Yeah, he was in a trash open because he had this big following here, like among youth and uh, was seemingly making a huge impact, but also was apparently like pulling people over on the highway too. So. That is insane. But like, the, how do you give them a ticket? Well, he didn't. I don't know what he was doing yeah. when he put yeah, I don't think Yeah, I don't know what he was, what your end goal is, just a, a power move. I cannot remember. This is probably what, 2014, 2015 maybe? Yeah, it's been a bit ago, yeah. Interesting. Uh, Patrick says his name was Matt Pitts or Matt yeah, Pitt. Yeah, yeah, I remember, yes. Matt Pitt, was that his name? I remember, I remember Pitt. Yeah. Interesting. And he would just pull people over. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Just as a jump scare? I, I really don't know what the uh, thought behind it was. He said he had the police lights because, you know, he went to these big events and it got him through traffic to get to the event. But and that's the illegal. Yeah, I think, I <laughs> yeah, think that's like, what the police said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. That's, okay. Continue, sorry. No, you're good. 24 year old lived in an apartment the size of an average parking spot. Alex Verhaeg had just turned 21 years old when he moved into a 95 square foot apartment in Manhattan's East Village. That is awful. To he me. probably paid like seven thousand dollars a month for it too. Eleven hundred dollars a month for that. I like that he's got the the art in there too. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, stuff up on the wall. Homie, uh, also you have to share a bathroom. Yes. Uh, with whoever's on that floor. Like, I think there's two showers, maybe. Now, this is in New York? Yeah. The five-story yeah. building has three bathrooms and two showers on each floor for tenants to share. Hard pass. So the, so how many... So it's six feet. Is that his bed? That's his bed, and the, this is his bed, and there are the windows behind the bed. You got a little teeny tiny, like, uh, hot plate right here for oh. kitchen. It's got a sink right there, and you got a little refrigerator. Yeah. That's it. That's, that is uh, miserable. Oh I would go, in, I would yeah, go insane. That's awful. I'm, like, claustrophobic looking at it. And it's 95 square feet. It's the whole apartment. Whole apartment. Oof. He says living in a space that small taught him that he doesn't need many things to survive. I enjoyed the minimalistic part of it. That does not look very minimalistic to me, sir. You have books. Yeah, you got a TV. And TV. It's a not TV that's not like knee, knee high. Yeah, it's like, just small. It's not minimalistic. Yeah. You are, oh, so this is another view. Yeah, that's uh, awful. That is terrible. You are cramming everything into that. Yeah. Where are his clothes? That's a good question. I bet under the bed. On his body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same thing every day. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's that's rough right there. I could not handle that. Yeah. I mean, eleven hundred bucks. I just, you know, I find a place outside of town and and train yeah. it. I guess. Yeah, that's a no go. That's the way I roll. So the Price is Right has emergency pants for overexcited contestants. What? Oh, Freak in case they wet their pants. <laughs> Freaking out is not an unusual reaction when someone's name is called to come on down and bid on fabulous prizes on the long running game to the Price is Right. One of the show's producers recently told people that the show had a contingency plan for even the most frenzied contestants. After all, it's better to be safe than sorry. When I got there, says former producer Mike Richards, they had a system in place in case someone peed their pants. I never saw it happen, but there were curtains and a blow dryer and a pair of sweats just in case, since we'd have to get on with the show. Sounds like an in-case-of-emergency break glass situation with baggy pants awaiting instead of a fire alarm. Some examples of overexcited contestants, a contestant named Aline Ferris won the showcase showdown and promptly lost consciousness. What? After her eyes rolled to the back of her head and she hit the floor, Bob Barker rushed to res resuscitate her with the help of the Price is Right staff. Remember to spay your pets. I like that Bob Barker got involved. Like there's probably an army of people that could do it, <laughs> but Bob was like, I'm first on the scene here. Carrie Kinder was another winning contestant, but she was so disoriented by the experience that she couldn't find her way off the stage. So, Wait, 
this is becoming a new thing. <laughs> We're on the stage. Yeah, well, I'm uh, sure it's confusing. But the thing is, you got to outdo the other guy. You weren't, you're going to be on TV, so they're going to they just lose their mind when they get picked. Of course, I don't watch this show anymore, but the picture provides like you have to go insane because people are like so. People have pulled hamstrings. Ladies have when they do the wheel. The old ladies try so hard and they fall down because they put too much force into it. It's a little exciting. Mm. Um, we had it only in here the other day because we were waiting for the NCAA tournament games to start yeah. and they were in that showcase showdown and some old girl had a uh, trip to, it's a boat and a trip to Belize. She won, but she missed her bid by $16,000. The other person was so bad. She wow. missed my sixteen thousand dollars and still won. Oh, holy cow! I'm like, how do you miss my sixteen thousand dollars? I don't know how this game works, but you've never watched. Games. You've never watched Prices Right. Mm-mm. But that do you I just, own a TV. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but they so Rocky, you're saying that you think that they get so excited because they like have but, to live up to the yes. Well, TV. I would be more excited. Taylor just got her name called. She freaked out. She did. She did a cartwheel. She went on stage. So now I got to one up her because I want to be on TV too. I want right. to be like, it's kind of like the guy that makes the perverted answer on Family Feud. I'm yeah. going to be a viral mm-hmm. video. I okay. want to say something t- super perverted. And, and then to do that, some of them pee their pants. Well, they, yeah. Well, just they get case. so excited they wear the pants. A lot of old people prizes. watch this show and participate. There's a lot of yeah. like grandmothers okay. that do this too. So it's kind of a uh, dangerous thing. Hey, I get an excessive amount of news alerts about like Wheel of Fortune fans upset about this. Will of Fortune fans <laughs> upset about the way Pat said you. No, I do. And I'm like, I think it's a conspiracy theory. Oh, I love conspiracy theories. Well, I think the conspiracy theory is Wheel of Fortune's leaking this stuff like fans yeah. are upset. I, I mean, I tell... bring more traction? I guess so. Well, I don't there's know. one that's like Pat Sajak, one guy won, and Pat Sajak didn't really congratulate him. Like, yeah. he kind of turned his back on him, and, like, what? people showed the clip, and then, like, people are tuning in, like, I want to see him be an ass, because I've never seen him be an ass. Interesting. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a setup. Have just you to get more guys t- known anyone that's gone on a game show? Oh, yeah. Uh, what game show was uh, you, are you? Do you remember Roger Schultz played at yeah. Alabama? He used to come on the show a lot. He was uh, on the Biggest, biggest loser, loser, but he was also oh, I think wow. on Price is Right. Oh, he, I think they, Roger they, was on Price is I'm Right. I'm sure he was, but like, yeah, Biggest Loser. Yeah, that's so the only person I know. That did he was that. on two shows. He played football at Alabama back in the early '90s and was a sinner. And so after yeah. his career, he blew up. But Roger had the most amazing personality. He's such wow. a funny guy. And I uh, never could really deal with his weight, so he went on Biggest Loser. But I think prior to that, it might have been after he was on Price is Right. I don't and know, Taylor so was Hicks was uh, on the, a little show called American Idol. Oh, yeah. He did really well. That's yeah. what my – I know a girl that – she was in the grade above me at Auburn, and she was on Family Feud oh, while no. we were there, while we were at Auburn. And then my dad – has a friend that went on Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. EG wants to be on Jeopardy. I do want to be on Jeopardy. Where are we on that? Are you working on it? Um, I have taken a break from my studies. Okay. Good. Yeah. Just but gotta, gotta I just got to process reset. everything. Who's reset. hosting that now? Oh, is, I don't know uh, his name. Ken I like Jennings. him now. Is it the guy that won all those? Yeah. Ken yeah. Jennings. I think they gives a battle between him and Miyamadoc. And uh, they got out <laughs> meow, 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 for some of her political views. Oh, yeah. She, she got in some controversy. Yeah. Didn't so she? they yeah. kissed that was Ken Jennings. Yeah. So he's the one that won all those times in a row, and he's got yeah. like the record. Is he a good host? Have you I watched enjoy it? him. I enjoy him. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers. But yeah, they, well, Aaron Rodgers wanted to do it, right? But yeah. I mean, he also wanted to be vice president yeah, and vice an president. NFL quarterback. What? <laughs> yeah. Vice president and a doctor. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers has had a lot of things. Moon. Yes. Um, all right. That is, uh, that is trash. Great job, EG. Thank, Thank you, little you. T. It is presented every single day by Mortgage Right. MortgageRight.com slash TNR. MortgageRight.com slash TNR. Um, all right. When we return, Jimmy D will rejoin us uh, from out in L.A. His coverage presented by MyBookie.ag. We'll put a wrap on the show, talk some more about Alabama and North Carolina. Don't forget this hour presented by Champies, World Famous Fried Chicken. Champies, World Famous Fried Chicken. Sterling and the gang have it open for lunch. They'll be open through dinner tonight. Those great chicken fingers, the great sides. Uh, somebody in the chat room said, don't sleep on the green beans. Excellent green beans there. Also, uh, the world-famous uh, Mississippi Delta recipe tamales. Pole boys right there at Champies Chicken. ChampiesChicken.com. ChampiesChicken.com. Jimmy D, back from L.A. after this. Take the next round anywhere you go with official Next Round gear. Buy yours today at nextround.store. Storm season is here. Make sure you have a plan of action in place right now. Greg from Pell City and Storm Restoration Roofing should be your first call when storms hit. Insurance companies love working with Storm Restoration Roofing because of Greg Nelson's name and reputation in the industry. When storms hit, call Greg Nelson. He's local. 205-542-3531. He's the home of the free no-cost roof inspection. Greg from Pell City on Facebook. 205-542-3531. It's Storm Restoration Roofing. 
The wait is over. Tonali has arrived. Beautifully distinctive Italian styling and performance. Come test drive the all-new 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonali plug-in hybrid at Alfa Romeo of Birmingham. The all-new Tonali offers best-in-class horsepower and torque. Fastest 0 to 60 times in its class. Plus best-in-class range with full electric charge. And best of all, qualified Tonali leasees are eligible for up to $7,500 EV tax credit factored into your lease. Hurry down to Alfa Romeo of Birmingham and experience the all-new Tonali. This hour of the next round is presented by the Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Now featuring seven days of giveaways with your chance to win a share of up to $125,000. The more you visit the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, the more chances you have to win. Stop by the New York Butcher Shop and pick up the finest in certified Angus prime beef steaks and burgers, premium pork chops, ribs, and all-natural chicken cut to order just for you. Their chef-prepared entrees and side dishes are the perfect dinner-to-go choice for your family and are ready to heat at home. With a great selection of fine wines and desserts, the New York Butcher Shop is your one-stop dinner shop. Two locations to serve you, Cahaba Heights and on Highway 119 in Greystone, the New York Butcher Shop. Rare quality, well-done service. Twin Peaks is the best in the game. Here, you're in the red zone for every college rivalry and divisional matchup all season long. On game day, you never have to decide which teams to watch, only what combination of bites, burgers, wings, and more to order. Plus, where else are your favorite draft beers always poured at a frozen 29 degrees? Only at Twin Peaks, the number one sports bar. Stick around after the sun sets. Twin Peaks is open really late. Wind down with bourbon and late night bites. Only at Twin Peaks. Get ready to level up your fandom with the Autograph app. Co-founded by the legendary Tom Brady himself, this app is your one-stop shop for everything college sports. Access to all the best sports content, exciting fan challenges, and exclusive rewards. Think crazy discounts on tickets, limited edition merch, and much more. Just look at this. Autograph hooked up six lucky fans with tickets to the Arkansas-Alabama game for just $16 a ticket. That's what they call true fan pricing. Ready to join the party? Download the free Autograph app today and use the code TNR for exclusive access. Start your day online with our website, nextroundlive.com, for the latest videos, podcasts, and college football stories. It's also a great way to stream the show or shop in the Next Round store. Stay connected by visiting nextroundlive.com. All right, final segment of the day from Birmingham and L.A. Jimmy D. going to join us courtesy of MyBookie.ag. Don't forget Lance'sLock.com. Free play up at Lance'sLock.com. He'll be back in the NCAA tournament throughout the weekend there. The Lock Every Single Day presented by Hemp Hill Services. Uh, if it doesn't flush right, drain right, run right, Hemp Hill is your first call. HVAC, it's going to be a problem for you. When you have had that air conditioner off uh, for most of the winter and then you're going to run it every day in the summer, that is going to end up being a problem. Get it tuned up right now to make sure it is not a problem. 229-2090, Hempel Services, 229-2090. Let's head back out to L.A. Dunaway's got the backpack on. You're ready to – what, are you heading over to Crypto.com, Jimmy D? we got to go to Crypto here in a second, but uh, just wanted to show you some of the scenery we've got here, the uh, unbelievable uh, – I don't know what you call this um, – greenery that they have at this area it's gorgeous uh you know what one cow plaza uh-huh but uh way way over here there's a, a trolley it's called angel's flight yeah. it takes you way up here where we are in fact it's going down right now look over here over my shoulder oh Did you see it yeah i do i do yeah. see that where's that take you uh just down to the bottom of the hill <laughs> okay it's more exciting if you just let me uh, pretend it is something awesome uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but other than that it's been a great morning out here in Los Angeles, and we're about to go down and actually do a little work uh, here in a second and get some um, get some reaction from Alabama, who's been on the road since uh, Taylor Adam in Spokane. And now uh, it's time to prepare at Crypto a little bit later on with their practice, which starts in about uh, one hour. Yeah, as you mentioned earlier, uh, for those that missed the start of the show when we uh, first jumped on with uh, Dunaway from L.A., the Alabama open practice now, you, it's up to the schools. Clemson, as you said, Dunaway, first out, they're open for the full practice. Alabama, second out, only the first 15 minutes open to the media, which tells you uh, they are probably trying to protect what Reitzel's situation is pretty closely, wouldn't you think? Um, that's what I would think, being in the business a long time. But, you know, 
North Carolina is going to practice there today, too, and it's sort of an open arena. Um, unlike the Sweet 16, I don't think you have any fans that will be in there. But, uh, you know, it's at the – at the uh, I should say the Final Four. At the Final Four, you actually have fans yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who, who show up. So it, the whole hour is open. So you really can't do – You then you go – Basically, that's a shoot around, right? And then you go to a real, real practice to put in your game plan. Uh, I would imagine today Nate Oates will do a little game planning on the floor in there, and you got to be careful. Uh, you know, you don't want any, you don't want any folks out there that uh, may be in the uh, the Carolina well, blue either. So yeah, and so it I, may not just be all right sell. Yeah, yeah, and I would say the good news about that though, Dunaway, on the game planning front, boy, you have had a lot of downtime they've got to fill. Now, look, I know they're worried about their academics out there too, and they're doing some remote learning on the road out in California, but this team has been together in the same place for a long period of time. And I mean, I don't think Nate Oates is going to over-prepare and, and just bog your team down with film, but um, there, there's been, you know, there's been a lot of time together. They have had plenty of time to break down the film necessary to, uh, to have a feel for what this North Carolina team is going to do. Yeah. A full practice yesterday at USC um, you follow, if you just follow Alabama basketball on Twitter and their social media, you saw that they had the practice at USC, even got a gym workout in, um, you know, did some weights, some loose weights uh, just to stay limber. Uh, I'm told or I believe just with my NCAA experience, they will do another practice today away from crypto. So sort of a two a day, you know, that may be more just getting up your shots inside crypto.com. The, the actual X's and O's will be done somewhere else where you do some more of the the game planning so that's a uh that's a, that's life of a, on the road in the ncaa tournament you get in a lot of practices some in the venue that a lot of people can see and some at a facility uh like in this case usc where you get a lot of uh, uh close practice hard work in uh, all right so the sweet 16 tips tomorrow night we'll have a lot more time to talk about it uh, tomorrow on the show including uh, alabama Taking on North Carolina, Brian Passink is going to join us on the show tomorrow. Dunaway still obviously going to be out there uh, in L.A. Um, just your gut feel, that first game, Clemson, Arizona. Arizona, I'll look at mybookie.ag right now, Dunaway, to see what the uh, how heavily they're favored. Arizona's going to be about a seven-point favorite in that game, I think. That first game out, if Alabama's fortunate enough to advance, they get the winner. Arizona, seven-and-a-half-point favorite. You like the Cats in that one? Um, I do. I think both of those were on Alabama's schedule, right, this yep, year? Yep. They Am I right both. about that? Yeah, they yeah. played them both. Yeah, played them both. Lost to both of them, but they played them both. Uh, Clemson got them in Tuscaloosa. I mean, Clemson's underrated. The ACC, I think, has exceeded expectations by a lot uh, in this tournament field. But I think Arizona wins that basketball game. And, uh, you know, that'll be good for you. You got your little Arizona sign there that's going to make me lose the bracket challenge. That's fine. It, it's, it's, it's time. It's time that I get punished on this show we'll every see. now and then. My life's too easy up there. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't try to uh, don't try to reverse landmine this thing. San Diego State, UConn. That's the biggest number on the board. Uh, UConn's still an eleven point favorite. I, you got to like the Huskies in that one. Oh yeah, no way San Diego State can win that game either. Uh, no way Clemson. No way San Diego State. Okay. I would uh, bet the farm on Arizona and on UConn. All right, so don't play won. the money money lines, yeah. Money yeah. line, so uh money line plus 475 by the way for San Diego State, minus oh. 700 for UConn. Minus 700 is the money line you're playing there. Uh, I'm being told in my ear that I need Clemson and San Diego State to both win for me to win the uh, uh. to knock you out of the uh, the comfort zone in the bracket challenge. Yeah, so. so no way they win. No way they win. Uh, no way, no way, no and, way. And then uh yeah. the only other game, Iowa State minus one and a half uh as they play against Illinois. Uh, Vegas telling you that's going to be the best game of the night there, the late game at TD uh, in Boston. Um, for some reason, I, a little Illinois feel for me, uh, but probably I, Iowa State. But I probably would, my bookie.ag would roll with Illinois. I don't know about you. That's a tough one, obviously. Um, I like Illinois better than Iowa State just as a team. Um, I don't know, man. That is a, obviously, the point spread tells you it's a toss-up game. I probably would go Illinois there. Uh, my gut right now tells me the only underdog that wins tomorrow night is Illinois. I like North Carolina over Alabama. It's just a gut feel. North Carolina over Alabama, UConn, and Arizona to win. So I would think the only, even and it's just a slight dog in Illinois, is the only dog that wins uh, tomorrow night. So, yeah. you know, it just occurred. So, uh, if, it, it just occurred to ahead. me. Uh, it just occurred to me if the schedule had held the same, we would have Alabama and Auburn or UAB uh, playing at the same time in the Sweet Sixteen. Uh, that would not have been great. What are you showing us now? The Incline Railroad coming back up? 
Yeah, isn't that cool? That is cool. I mean, that's a that's a steep climb. I don't know that it's entirely necessary. Um, are they driving it themselves, or is there a driver on there? Uh, much like me, I think it's a one track mine. Brown, <laughs> okay, it's going down and up. There's no, there's no driving. <laughs> uh, speaking of tracks, NASCAR coming back. Talladega Super Speedway done away. Eight seven seven go to Dega Talladega Super Speedway dot com for the Geico five hundred weekend. You know, I can't wait for that, Brownie. Uh, we're we're excited. We got some stuff to do with JohnsonRVCenter.com yeah. out there, and uh, we'll uh, we'll enjoy that. We'll do some camping. You can do some camping. They have uh, all the camping you need, primitive all the way up to luxurious RV camping with some stadium seats, part of that package as well. I'll always encourage you to look for the advantages you get at Talladega Super Speedway, like the garage experience. You can upgrade with that. You get a ticket with your Geico 500, uh, excuse me, you get a pass with your Geico 500 ticket in to see Walker Hayes on Saturday night. And don't forget the great racing. See, the thing at Talladega, I try to tell people all the time, even if you don't like NASCAR, go watch the people, go enjoy the food, enjoy the camping, being outside with 100,000 of your closest friends. That's a good time. But there's great racing too, right? Yep. World's fastest speedway, talladegasuperspeedway.com, talladegasuperspeedway.com, April 19th. Through the 21st. 877-GO-TO-DEGA to get those tickets. All right, thank you to mybookie.ag. Code next round. They've got Dunaway out there. He's on his way to crypto as soon as we wrap in just a few moments. Follow us on social media for more of the coverage there from Alabama's Media Day uh, at Next Round Live on social media at Next Round Live. For Dunaway and the entire staff, I'm Ryan Brown. Thank you for joining us for the next round. We'll see you tomorrow at 9 o'clock.